little Crosby, Stills, and Nash to start us off very slowly on Laid Back Radio. Hey, welcome. We're in the uh, canyon, doing the show out of the canyon this week. It's little Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Bennington for you. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Hello. And we've got a very groovy friend who just stopped by with some fresh coffee and some great herb. <laughs> Stanley Bennington. What's up, bros? Did you really run all the way over here? <laughs> Working on my core this morning. Yeah, I was watching you on uh, Periscope, and it was really cool, man. It's really cool. Really neat. Thanks so much. I've abandoned CrossFit. So nature, man. So nature. That's me. Art and nature is what it's all about, everybody. It's a Bennington show in the canyon. From the canyon to your home. Broadcasting live in the canyon. Apparently, it's all white radio. None of the acts out here seem to be of color. Uh-uh. No. And that's but, how we like it. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's we not. like them, but from afar. <laughs> it's just right. by coincidence. So that's Rock Muse Week, where we... Uh, it's a song written about somebody else. You know who that song was written about? Chris no, I do not. You know, It was written about David Crosby, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joey Jojo, do you know who that song was written about? Someone's house... Yeah, the house um, isn't what it's about. Okay. Dude. Right. <laughs> Two cats in the yeah, yard. How about you? I do know who it was written about. Who was it? I think it was written about one Miss Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell, who had been the old lady to at least sixty six point six percent of Crosby, Stills, Nash. Well, I've I've had David Crosby in, and I've had uh, Graham Nash in. Stills has been in with them before too, but they had said at different times, like they would write a song and like bring it in and be like, listen to this. And she'd be like, Oh, you know, Jody Mitchell's like, that's great. Listen to what I just wrote. And, you, <laughs> and they felt bad about themselves because they just got mm. crushed by her. It's way better than I, what I just wrote. She is as Gail's name them. Cunsmith. She's a Cunsmith. All right. People were very impressed with the fact that on the Periscope today, Chris found a dollar. Found Money with Chris is my new show on Periscope, where when I find money, I then immediately Periscope about it <laughs> and let everyone know how much money I'm making. How often is this going to come up? All the time, Does I feel Does change like. count? Do you feel like your dad gave you that from heaven? <laughs> <laughs> He's watching over me. Drop the dollar bill on me. I noticed this, though. Chris is better on the street than he is in the in the studio. He's a street guy. He's and this street studio man. limits him. If we could just keep him out running around like Tony Saragusa, <laughs> his life would be great. Well, I love interacting with the people in New York City. Dude, when you were running... <laughs> I was fucking dying, and then I looked around, and there were people laughing their ass off all over. Really? I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know there was anyone around me. I, I didn't want to run into people. I was screaming, excuse me, miss, men or women. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the found money thing is just another way Chris is turning into Fez. <laughs> magic thinking with Chris Stanley. Yeah, that was a magic dollar bill I found, and it started my day off wonderfully. <laughs> Joey, did you happen to see the scope? Oh, yeah, I saw, I saw it. It was hilarious. You see that your Toonies and the Loonies line got used <laughs> yet again? I love it. A, a, a line that he couldn't buy a laugh with, but just stays with us forever. Look at this beautiful uh, photo that Carla Finch captured of me and Chris. A very moody, noir look. It is noir, man. That's actually great. Oh, shit. That's awesome. That'll just be another thing my mom yells at me to turn into a real picture for. <laughs> oh, it is real. Just look at it. Computer. Print what it. did she say? Gail. What did Carla say? No, what did my mom say? Oh, yeah. She said, uh, I don't believe in computers. <laughs> so I want a real picture. <laughs> she doesn't like the cloud, huh? Well, she doesn't believe in anything. Does anyone where... understand the cloud? Yeah. I know I don't. If I want to talk to my mom, I have to leave a message, and then she goes to a payphone and calls me. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want to be. She doesn't want to be watched. Alex. Yeah. What's up? What's going on? You called uh, us. Is there anything yeah. you'd like to say? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. All right. Well, well, all right. All right. So uh, <laughs> the periscope shit. There are these people. So like uh, you know. I've, I've just been doing it recently here, and of course, scope rowing is the biggest thing on Periscope. Thank you. There's, there's, there's these weirdos that, like, are, I don't know how they're doing it. They must be making money, but the, the, it's like this cult following of people that just keep sending out 
you know, you know, request to Periscope, and they're convincing you somehow that you can make money on there. I don't know if you've seen any of these people, but it's the most bizarre thing well, I've ever seen. Here's what they attempt to do is to gain favor in any kind of new technology and be known as an expert, right? So <laughs> I've went to see these scopes before, right? And they'll be like, uh, how you can do the perfect scope, how you can get people to watch your scope. It's and, so bizarre. Yeah, but here's the deal. They'll have 18 or 25 people watching them. Yes. Go, Why no, are you no, one no. of the least watched scopes? <laughs> <laughs> Boom, blocked. They don't want to hear anybody. Sure, you blow know? up their gimmick. But as soon as a new technology starts, there's always like a, you know, uh, a pyramid scheme of how you can turn it into big bucks. And it's because people have done it with YouTube or yeah. whatever these stupid fucking things that are out there, Instagram. A long time, it was like search engine optimization. That was a big thing. Like, basically... Yeah, that's done. Yeah, that's over with. Now it's just like social media. How you make money off social media. But I I saw a video of a woman, and I wish I could have found it, because immediately I thought, oh my God, we have to play this on the show, because it was the most obnoxious video of a woman saying, like... Double your followers in just one day and like use Periscope and like talking about like social media. But she was so utterly obnoxious that right. it, like you would have imagined it was like an SNL character. She didn't even seem real. And then I couldn't find it again. But it's crazy. There like there are people out there who are doing those things. And you're right. Her views were so small on this YouTube video saying how you can use Twitter and Periscope to, you know, get your business off the ground or, you know, if you're. A mo your modeling career, whatever she was saying. She had no idea what she was talking about. She and, had no idea. And yet, cuck fucks like that, they end up going into big companies getting paid consultant fees. Yeah. It's like, we need a social media advisor or whatever the fuck they're called. I remember the first day that we came over here, I had to have, to Raw Doug, I had to have a meeting with some people about Twitter because fucking Tim was obsessed with Twitter. And he's like, why don't you have your own Twitter account? I go, because I have a radio show. I don't want to fucking keep talking all day. I got the word out during the slot. Yeah, yeah. I, everything I have to say gets done here. And he brings in someone, and they're like talking about it. I'm like, you were in HR. You're not a fucking media consultant. You used to work in our HR department. Yeah, that, fucking idiots. Yeah, it, it's just people just say like, yeah, I am a expert. That's that. So you should listen to me about how you should fucking work your social your social media, which is fucking seventy five, maybe ninety percent bots anyway. I know. Just because you have a big following in any social media doesn't mean people physically show up. There are a couple people that have it and that works that way. Uh, you know, comedians that are literally in touch with people who want to buy tickets, but that's such a minority. And that's not from them building up their social media presence. No, it's from being fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, it's from the, from the, their yeah. work. Yeah. And then like, like, oh, okay, I love this guy a lot. I'll follow him on whatever it is. Yeah, Bill Burr is not kicking ass because he's really good at Twitter and YouTube. It's because he's good at writing and performing material, <laughs> period. Now, there are those cases like the fat Jewish where they used social media, uh, you know, probably got themselves a bunch of sponsors, got money that way. And look where it ended up. It ended up being, you know, the emperor had no clothes. And it well, was... he even said that, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the deal with that. That's the same as, look, that dude got rich playing the lottery. You know what I mean? Like, I believe, I, I do believe that people get in the ground floor of something and it works out for them. But in the same way as you buy a lottery ticket and it works out for you, it doesn't work out for the vast majority of people. Yeah, there's a ridiculous amount of accounts that are doing the same exact thing that the fat Jewish did. And there's, right. and there's another one, like Jared or something. Fuck Jared, I believe. And there's like a couple of them that a bunch of people follow. And then there's fucking millions of other accounts that just steal content. Post on Instagram, and they're hoping that they hit, and right. they're just constantly hashtagging things, and it's not going to work. It just isn't. I don't know why the fat Jewish worked, or fuck Jared. That's the point. You don't know why that <laughs> guy caught that wave in the perfect spot, but he did. Yeah, now he has five million fucking followers or whatever, and gets fifty grand a a, a post for from fucking beef jerky companies. <laughs> Is that right? Really? Yeah. I think uh, I think it was like Slim Jim went to him. It's like we want to give you money and give us a Instagram post. That... First of all, nobody needs the fucking Tom Media Slim Jim. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Save your money. So we made a jacket. Don't need to advertise at this point. I, yeah, I I left here yesterday, and there was this uh, Coca Cola truck, right? 
and all the lights on the side of it were done up like an old Coca-Cola commercial. It was fucking beautiful. And then they had a Santa Claus who was sitting in front of the truck for the children. And it was the youngest Santa Claus I ever saw in my life. It was like if we put Joe in a Santa Claus suit. I'll do it. No one's asking. All right. So there was a great creep shot of Chris that was uh, found. Our friend Jay Lawson was riding the train and just saw Chris Stanley uh, on the train in the morning. Looked like you were leaning against the door, dude. Yeah, it was. Despite yeah. Gail's story to us from last week, I, you know, I, I still, I was tired, and I wanted to, just, you know, get a nice lean on. That's, that's, you know, that's my thing. Well, she took a creep shot of you <laughs> in your natural element to see that, like, well, there's two things that could happen: a, the way Chris is dressed isn't a costume, <laughs> or b, he's bought his gimmick full time. Look at him there. <laughs> Are you sleeping? I was. My eyes were closed. I was, um, you know, trying to take a nap. My train time is me time. So, you know, I'm just trying to think. <laughs> just thinking on the subway underground. I just can't believe how pensive and, like, just weight of the world on your shoulders. I'm towering over the other people on the train. You're, too. Really, like, like you're, you're a big dude. You look really tall. It's yeah. weird. <laughs> but here's the thing. What an attractive man. Oh. What a seriously attractive man. Nobody can deny that. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Yes, thank you. I always said that he response. has to beat the girls off with a stick. And by that, I mean he masturbates them <laughs> with a branch. <laughs> he has to. Do you like this? Do you like this? <laughs> huh, Branchy? <laughs> there I am, rocking the subway hard. I'm just mad that it says L6 over your head and not L7. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> just a little bit more to the right. I would have got that L7. <laughs> Blue blockers look good, though. It's a goddamn great sunglass. Oh, yeah. No doubt. You got to get those nighttime blue blockers. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm looking into them. <laughs> All right. They actually said on our thing, see the beast that is natural habitat. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe that's where you come up on the door. <laughs> I'm above the glass. Like, I... I stand in that exact position every day, and I know where I come up, but that's bizarre. He's, he's a much taller guy than any of us uh, No, I'm lucky if I can see out the window. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw this, too. Lauren says that she will be attending the Christmas party with Dennis Falcone and hashtag Bennington. Now, who's all going, Gail? You said you're definitely going? I'm definitely going to the new hot club, Pasha. <laughs> Which is your last two weeks to get it. <laughs> it's a fire sale. I don't think the lights are going to be on when we get in there. It's going to be a fucking keg. A you know what bucket of ice. Uh, can, uh, can I get this drink? Uh, we don't have that anymore. <laughs> we haven't stocked that. <laughs> Wait, you have, you have no tequila? It's all gone. We're out of tequila, beer, red Every, wine. Everything must go. You can have a Chardonnay. Fuck. So you'll have to hang out with Lauren. What about you, Chris? Are you going? I'm going to Pasha. I'm already there in my mind. Joey? I'll be at Pasha for the Christmas party. <laughs> Joey, you realize this is just for you, not your squad. Because Joe, unlike Chris, goes everywhere alone, and Joe goes around with a little fucking pack of dogs. I roll deep every day. How many, how, how many are in what you would consider your boys? My boys consist of Charlie... <laughs> He's tall as fuck, pretty boy. You know, we got girls when he's around. We got Banyum. He keeps his ear to the ground. He's street smart. And then we got Luke, sharp as a tack, good with the ladies. And then I round it out. Me, Joey, Jersey wearer, <laughs> Brooklyn bomber. So you don't even have, you know how to fucking describe everyone but yourself. Oh, yeah. No, I'm tech savvy. I'm a, what they say, a social media expert. <laughs> Happy. Now, you roll with a bowling team, four dudes. Yeah, yeah. they go bowling too. What's your average? Three hundred. No, Chris. When you hear that, are you thinking right away squad goals? When no. you think of Joe's crew, I never think of squad goals. I think of fucking scope goals. It's just my fucking single. My, I'm a single man. All right, I'm a single man looking to get on the scope. I don't have a squad. Do you want to join my squad? I don't know how one joins a squad. Now tell the uh, tell the story of this new Tinder type uh, app called Squad. Okay, so there's this new app. It's like Tinder but for groups. 
It's called Squad. And now you invite your friends to squad up with you. And then once you have your squad formed, it has to be two people, maximum of six people. You can start swiping on other formed squads to have the evening a of meet your up. desire. A, yeah, like a, meet a up. friend meetup. Yeah. Or is it like a hookup, like we're a bunch of single dudes looking for a group of single ladies? Either or, Gail, either or. Let me say this. As dumb and stupid as this idea is, it kind of works for girls because girls, it's a little scary to go out and meet a fucking dude, which is why four people go out together. Uh, I see it in my neighborhood all the time. I'm out having a smoke and I just see fucking eight black miniskirts go by me. They're all just dressed <laughs> in tight black yeah. wherever they go. And I'm like, oh, off you go, ladies. Make it happen tonight. Get so. But so if those eight girls found out, all right, we're going to go meet this group of guys, one drink only, and if we don't like them, we're out of there. We'll re-squad with someone else. Yeah, they're re-squatting. <laughs> I don't know if there's a big enough market, but there's a definite market in this idea. Yeah, this is actually a good idea. I like the idea of it not for hookups, but just like, we fucking love these dudes. They're fucking yeah. great. <laughs> We're fucking growing down with them let me from tell now you, on. Let me tell you, Vito and I, we started a squad yesterday, <laughs> and we were swiping through left, right, left, too many dudes, not enough chicks, left, right. And then we came across two dudes who had two really funny profile pictures. We were like, all right, we got to squad with them. <laughs> so you were allowed to make a, a, a bro squad. You were going to meet other squads. Yep, you can meet a bro squads. Girl squads, intermingling squads, you know, of guys and girls. That's Here's an another thing, too. You could find a Viking squad or a Packers squad. You know what oh, I mean? Sure. Oh. You're out on a Sunday. You know, a lot of people are like, where's the bar where all this shit happens? You know, you find a squad of dudes that are, aren't you always, <laughs> if you don't live in your hometown, you love running across somebody else who's cheering with you. Hell yeah. Yeah, you can do all of that. But once you meet those squads that you like, you don't go back on, though. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder, the, I wonder if there's a temporary deal to this. Well, maybe then you just parlay it into you're, we're really squad bros in real life. Yeah. But that hurts the app. That's my True. point. Yeah, because then, I mean, how many fucking squads are you going to hang out with once you find, like, a, like maybe, what, two squads? I don't know. Look, one of the guys in my squad is pretty tech savvy. I'm going to check. <laughs> I'm going to check with Joe right now. I feel like eventually they'll come out with a feature where you can have a super squad and all the squads you meet up, you can keep those squads. But, you know, I'm a social guy. I like to do social things. Here's the thing for me. You know what my squad is? What's that? Earth. Planet Earth. Oh. Wow. We only got one yeah. world. One, one world. world. I noticed yesterday, swiping, that there are a lot of uh, Asian squads and a lot of, like, Jewish squads. So yeah. that fits your niche, too, if you're into that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Sure. People that are alike squad together. Yeah, I yeah, get yeah. that. It's tribes. I like it. I'm in. Do I'd you, love to join the only squad squads I've met so far. Me. I met one squad, and that's the Stangles. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday, uh, no, yeah, was it yesterday or maybe two days ago? One of the Stangles, and I'm not saying which one, gave me a very nice dry cigar. Oh, nice. That's <laughs> very <laughs> sweet. Nice. It was crumbling. Was it smokable? <laughs> <laughs> Another feature of the squad app, once you meet someone... Because the squads, they connect to your Facebook, so they can see your Facebook profile, right? Once you connect with someone, it's a group chat. Anyone on both squad sides can squad goal together. So it's like a chat room, like fucking AOL? Yeah, it's like a chat room with 12 people, depending on the size of your squad. If you have a popular squad or an unpopular squad. Did you match any squads last night? No, I didn't. I blame Vito, though. (laughs) But you're you're just a two-man squad. I know. It's not much of a squad. It's more of a duo. Yeah. yeah, but as soon as he meets those other two dudes, now he's running a four-man squad. Four-man squad. That's only two off maximum squad. <laughs> We're doubling it up rapidly. Is there a squad maximum? Can you? How many fucking people can be in the squad? Six. Six people. So you got to choose them like MySpace did with your top eight. You know. Uh, I have another question. Is there a squad rating after meeting up with the oh, squad? Oh, wow. Right. Like Uber. Are you ranking them? No, I don't think there's a squad rating more than, I, I guess you can not squad up with them again, but there should be a squad rating. I think there should be. 
This is a good squad. They're great dudes. This squad, pretty boring. My squad would break the fucking app because it would get such a high rating. <laughs> my squad right now are Eagles of Death Metal. That's my squad that I run with. That's a dope squad. That's a really good squad. You see that uh, that story yesterday where they went back to that place? Yeah. Um, they were crying their eyes out. Bottle on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was rough. That was rough, man. <laughs> It brought back that 9-11 thing, how everyone felt about 9-11, how the people in that area kind of didn't want to unsquad. Yeah. I'm, sure. I'm talking a way that the, that the founders can understand. Definitely. You just want to be around other people who feel that way. Yeah, and it's hard to relate to people who didn't experience the same thing that Joe. you did. Yeah, yeah. Like Joe, Joe when he was at his dentist or whatever he was. Dentist. I was at 11. <laughs> okay, because kids that are 11 don't get go to the dentist. You said 11. <laughs> said 11 also. <laughs> That's the way they say it out there. <laughs> that's their fucking shit. It's a ridiculous squad. You know who's in my squad now? It's Patrick Wilson. Oh, shit. That's oh, awesome. Man. I've been talking about doing a Broadway show with him. Wow. What kind of show? I don't know. We'll do most of the stuff. <laughs> it's like this thing that we're doing for Tito's right now. It's getting a lot of buzz. Oh, people are a buzzing. Yeah. Tito's holiday spirit. When are we doing that uh, contest today where people have to guess the holiday movie that we're doing? Oh, uh, we'll do that around 1 o'clock. Around 1 o'clock. Jeez. Mm, Say it twice so I can understand. 1 p.m. in the East. But what time will it be? <laughs> 1. <laughs> she is in our squad. Oh, obviously. Definitely. Gotta be great. It's Tito Beverage up in the squad. You see on that? I'd lose my shit. You love Tito. Love him. Well, what the love? What's not the fucking love? There's nothing. He's a wonderful man. And yet you're acting like, you know, maybe there's a problem. Oh, God, no, 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 no. I still, I still have that signed bottle of vodka you gave me. Why don't you drink it? No, I'm keeping it. I want to keep that. Do you I cherish wanna, it? Yeah, I do cherish that. I have my signed bottle of Tito's vodka. It's the shit. That's so sweet. All right, HQ wants to know, what about the squatter squatting? Uh... The squad crap seems like a Stanley thing. <laughs> you know a dude who needs friends. They, uh, Joe and Vito tried to get me to join their squad. I wasn't having none of it. No, it's because it's only for the iPhone. Um, it's not on Android yet. Oh, shit! Android, I don't want to be in your fucking squad. Android's better. <laughs> that Steve Jobs movie sucked. That just reminds me. I don't know where my phone is. Really? Well, I'm going to call it. You have it. Sitting here in front of me. All right, I'm not going to call it. Call it anyway. See who answers it. Tell me you're going to kill him. <laughs> I'll fucking kill you, dude. I have a special set of skills. Look, I'm just going to lay it down and run then. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to bring it back. <laughs> Dylan says, I'm going to pistol with the next person that says hashtag squad. Dude, that could be your squad. You could be a squad that goes around hating on people who say squad. It's the anti squad squad. <laughs> Melissa says, me and my Jesus gym loving uh, going home is calling ourselves the God and, and Quad Squad. That's pretty cool. I get those quads tight. I like to listen to Early Who with my Mod Squad. <laughs> Just Early Who, though. Just Early. <laughs> <laughs> then Melissa, this was her big thing that she's known for. My mom was killed in a horrendous tweet pinning ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that is funny. What's her whole deal? She seems to be funny. Like a funny chick. You should squat up with her, Gail. Oh, the funny I'm chicks. Definitely going to squat up with her. Join a squad. Who, Gail, who's your uh, Sirius XM squad outside of this room? Outside of this room. Who is my Sirius XM squad outside of this room? Yeah. Someone that I squat up with who isn't on this show? Yeah. Uh, I guess Vito. Vito's my squad. He's not in this room. Mm. Okay. I know who mine is right now. Who's Rob that? Cross. I squad uh, with. I would definitely squad with Rob Cross. Doesn't seem like he wants you around, though. Why? You're not a Cardinals fan. Yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. You against Rob Cross tonight. You're not even feeling anything for your Vikings, right? It's folding time. Yeah, it's uh, it's really hard right now. <laughs> Cardinals are really good. <laughs> 
I don't know why I do this to myself every Carson year. Palmer's going to light your fucking ass up. He is. It's, he's we're, a badass. We're missing like four of our starting defensive men. That's good. That's what you want. Yeah. Anthony Barr. What about your boy AP fucking turning on the team and saying they're shit and they're make a lot of coaching? What? I'm like, the same assholes that stood with you. Why the rest of the world would have been happy if AP never played again? Oh you know yeah, I mean? he was done. Like he was done. Like Ray Rice done. Yeah, they don't care if someone is out of the league. They don't. The fans don't mind. They'll find another running back. No yeah. one even cares about running backs at this point in the league anyway. AP is just a fucking anomaly. Yeah, he's bitching about like I'm not getting enough fucking carries. What the fuck? He's leading rusher, Pepper. I'll tell you that much right now. Yeah, but you'd be the re- leading rusher these days with 500 yards. <laughs> You ain't gonna rush when you're down fucking 30 fucking points. How about how Shady won't drop his fucking Eagles thing? After oh, yeah, he's time? still pissed. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I won't I sh- blame him. He said, I won't shake your fucking hand when Chip Kelly said, I'll shake his hand. Yeah, well, I'd shake somebody's hand. I fired too. I wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. When you get well, fired, that you're more pissed. Yeah, why would he care? <laughs> so, uh-uh, but, I'm not gonna shake his hand. I fired him. I always like it if you break up with a chick and she's like spreading rumors about you and shit. You're just like, I don't know. I think she's great. You know what I mean? She's really I'm nice. I'm sorry she feels bad. <laughs> I think she's great. And it's all on my end. I mean, yeah. You know. I was happy. You know, got a new chick and all. <laughs> so, I hope she. F- I hope she finds happiness. Right, exactly. Stop yeah. freaking out. <laughs> I mean, you know, seriously, she's fucking sitting in front of my house three o'clock in the morning. She. But think- that's kind of hot. <laughs> Maybe she's wrong to something. I love her. I she's think. totally lost her mind. Yeah, and Herm Edwards was like. Losing his fucking mind on like NFL Live yesterday, just getting emotional over the fucking Chip Kelly thing. But here's the deal with that, and I get mad at them and ESPN. And these guys are always telling the fucking players to shut their their mouths and, and play. Right? The players are forced to do these interviews, and then they have, the, no. Here's what they're forced to do. A boring interview. They can't do an interview where they say something controversial or exciting or flashing. They got to say this. Uh, I'm just worried about the ball club, and it's really just one day at a time. Um, is that all? Thank you, guys. That's what they have to do every day of their life. One guy shows to shut his mouth, and they find him $50,000 lynch during the Super Bowl last year. Again, going to the, the um, press day, he was like, I'm not, I don't want to talk to any of these people. And then it felt like, well, we're going to fucking dock you $50,000. And Richard Sherman fucking talked to the guy, uh, talked to a reporter with fucking passion, and everyone fucking, he got killed on the fucking internet. Yeah, everybody's, everyone's they call vicious. Him a thug. Yeah. What the fuck? All right, look at Peyton Manning. He's played for what? 200 years now? How many years is he? Uh, 18 years? All right, 18 years. Give me one quotable line in 18 years. There is no reason for Peyton, to, for you to listen to Peyton Manning. Because he's just saying vanilla on purpose. He just doesn't want to be quoted. He doesn't have a quotable line in 18 years. <laughs> and he's done a press conference just about every day for 18 years. And if somebody says, tell me something Peyton said, I don't know. Just got to, you know. The guy was um, pulled yeah, together as a team. He didn't read the coverage right. <laughs> he's uh, very impressed with the other defense. <laughs> he respects Tom Brady. <laughs> I didn't expect him to say that. I thought he was going to call him a cunt. <laughs> I guess chicken parm you taste so good. That's the one thing he said in 18 years. Omaha. Hmm. Wait, Omaha. And they had to catch him saying that. <laughs> What's up, Qu- What's up there, Kyle? Hey, Joey, Jojo. I have a squad where we only listen to older The Who, and oh. we're called Squad Rafinha. The thing that you said, older the who, is what <laughs> fucked you up, dude. I mean, it would have been a very cute, fun little line, but you said older the who. Older the who? I saw him on squad yesterday and his squad, Rafinha, and that, it, that's what it says on their verbatim for their tagline. Come on, man. Squad line. This fucker's tech savvy. I mean, he, he really is. He's a social media maven. And he's a jersey wearer. <laughs> yep, jersey wearer and the Brooklyn Bomber. Well, you know, bomber jacket. I own a bomber jacket. Wear it, man. Shit, yeah. Why don't you wear it? Rock it, know. bro. Too Love- warm? Not going on <laughs> enough planes. I'll tell you right now, it was like 56 degrees outside today in New York City, two weeks out. Doesn't make sense. I'm yeah. loving it. Some dude was eating his lunch outside. Just t- outside, just sitting down in a t-shirt eating a sandwich. I was... <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> this is really crazy. I was thinking of uh, getting my Christmas tree this weekend, and I 
checked the forecast to see if it was going to be rainy, <laughs> and it said uh, this week it's going to be 61 degrees is the high. It's not very festive to go get a no. Christmas tree. Nobody wants to be sweating while they're putting the <laughs> wrapping up the tree. It's weird. I saw Obama, he tried to talk about it, he just started crying. I don't know what the fuck he knows <laughs> that we don't. Is he crying? And then he just said it like this. Love your family. Cherish them. Cherish them. Cherish them. Cherish them the way you have them. I love my girls so much. I don't know what's happening. I just went out. Should I be reading into this? Uh... There is a new thing going around, too, of it looks like the Hollywood people are trying to come out against gun violence. And uh, it normally helps. A viral video helps in times like this when you just uh, have somebody read a script and then it's just one person at a time gets to say it. Yes. That's the beauty of it. Like one line. One line at a time. Sometimes those lines will overlap or you'll say the same line the previous person said. Yeah. You know, then you know it's heavy. I play a little bit of this, Chris. All right. This is We Can End Gun Violence. Let's do it. We can. We can. We can. We can. We can. We can end. We can end. We can end. We can end gun violence. Uh, take it from the beginning, Chris, and here's what I want you to do for us. Okay. Yell out the celebrities' names. Okay. Now, there's so also some victims of gun violence in there. Yeah. So you have to yell out victim of gun violence. <laughs> Got it. Okay. All right. Ready? Go ahead. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, Bart Walters. We. Uh, oh. that was the- <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. We. Victim of gun violence. Can. Michael Stipe. Victim that was David Cross. <laughs> we My victim. Can. Victim. Can. Victims. We uh, can. Shit, I forgot her name. Julianne Moore. Victim. Uh, bacon. Kevin Bacon. Sophia Vergara. Amy Schumer. Victim. 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 This is fucking perfect Get for the Get in hut. there, hut. Yeah. Two, and two, I was going to shoot this dude today, and then I saw this. <laughs> and I'm like, I ain't now. I turned you? <laughs> I don't even think people who own guns are on the side of gun violence. You know what I mean? I don't think <laughs> no. people buy guns so they go, I hope we have more gun violence the, with this. They're on the side of ownership, simply, just the, for the yeah. ability to fucking own the gun. This isn't going to stop gun violence. <laughs> But we can. We can. We can. And the cops. <laughs> Wait, what did I say? I was following Jenny Hudson. <laughs> Delete that. <laughs> Man, does Michael Stipe just look like David Cross now? Yeah, yeah I crazy. actually thought it was for a split yeah. second. Good call with the Stipe, What's though. with the green toque, though? Doesn't make any sense. I mean, that is a bright green toque. It's too bright. What kind of squad is this dude in? <laughs> right, it's up on the uh, on the iBang right now. If you want to stop gun violence, you can do this with your squad. And you should. Make a squad video that you can end <laughs> violence of the gun variety. I nominate Chris Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I was on Opie's show one day and they were playing that. I'm going, what was she thinking? Why did she do this? Crazy person. <laughs> The thing she gets in her head. I like when you were yelling out all the celebrities and you were getting <laughs> so competitive with yourself. And then finally Nathan Lane just shows up and you just go, fuck! <laughs> you couldn't think of his name. Yeah, that's it. Nathan Lane. One point you made it sound like Amy Schumer was a victim. <laughs> You're like Schumer, victim. <laughs> just a quick cut was all. She's really against the gun violence. Oh, yeah. Her and her cousin or brother or whatever. Uncle. No, cousin. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what goes on in that Schumer house. There seems to be a ton of them. So many. <laughs> the Schumer squad is strong. Yeah, that Schumer squad. There's multiple Schumer squads. Fucking, you throw a brick on their house, it looks like a school fire drill. Everybody comes <laughs> piling out of there. <laughs> I'm 
many people are in that house. Yeah, there's a lot of Schumers. Don't kid yourself. There's at least two I know. So, Chris, you didn't do all that good with it. No, I mean... <laughs> It was too fast for you. It was really it, it's bad. going really fast. Nathan Lane really fucked me up. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, I think I missed. I think I called some celebrities victims too. <laughs> I think I might have called Michael Strahan a victim. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> me and Regis wish. <laughs> uh, hey, Frank. Frank. Yes. Yeah. What's up? Mr. Bennington, I, I just want to make the point, and I'm sure you're aware of this. You're an, you're an intelligent guy. It's, uh, it's not gun violence, per se. Uh, let's just label it as violence. It's not the gun. It's the person. Yeah, we all get that. But, it, well, there's two things to this. Number one, there's less violence now than at any time in fucking history. That's correct. But at the same time, when you're watching those cops and they're taking on these guys with this fucking... Uh, amazing weapons. You got to feel for the cops, right? Yes, sir. I do. Definitely. Yeah. So, where would you be on that? Well, I mean, I used to work in law enforcement, and and it's a it's a sucky job that you do with no gratification and shitty pay. Uh, um, you know, everything. Yeah, but there's always a chance there. to grab a bag of coke. Be honest about that. Get some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. That's exactly true. But uh, it's like you said, the violence is less now than it's ever been, and we've been killing folks with sticks and stones and bats and bows and arrows for millions of years, you know. So. But I'd rather, if I was in a mall, I'd rather have somebody come in with a fucking rock and a stick. I think it has to do with, and I, I have a friend who's uh, really pro-gun and um, all that. I'll just say her name is Shower Bench. And she's trying to give me the... The huckle, the huckabee type of way that we got to restore family, you mm -hmm. know? And I don't know if the whole setup of the country is lined up for people to tell you how to raise your family either. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I don't know where the community comes into that. that. That almost seems like the right wing turning into far left wing. Yeah, that was always the... Uh principle that uh, certainly when you were taught when you were younger the difference between the black and white difference was that they wanted less meddling and yet that to me sounds like somebody saying there's this there's one way to raise a family there's one way to you know that that sounds a little meddly it, it, it becomes difficult because people get upset with teachers even trying to raise their kids when i was younger uh if the teacher called your fucking house you were in trouble. Now if the teacher calls your house, the fucking parents start to yell at the teacher. You know, how dare you talk about my kid? So, I mean, I think a lot of this shit comes to people think that they're so fucking precious that if the world doesn't work the way they think the world does, they flip out. If they don't get a fucking girlfriend, they flip out. If they didn't get the job they wanted, they flip out. If they see that the Kardashians have more toys than them, they fucking flip out. And somehow we're acting like you're so fucking important that the rest of society doesn't matter. You know, these fucking... Uh, if you look at every one of these things, I mean, people could call it, uh, you know, radical Islam, but that's crazy Islam. You know what I mean? The guy who shot up the Planned Parenthood was a crazy person. Right. Those fucking terrorists, crazy person. The person who ran into train wreck the movie, crazy person. We got a lot of fucking crazy people out there who, again, think that they're so important and precious and they should be famous or rich or whatever the fuck they should be. Well, Idiots. Uh, and, and when it comes to banning guns versus putting uh, more restrictions on guns, you have to think, no, if there were no guns in this country, would violent acts still occur? Of course they would. Yeah. But I always think that when they say that, it's the same idea as somebody who thinks it's okay to, uh, you know, that they want to own a gun. You wouldn't want to think that everybody in their home had a button to set off a nuclear warhead. We'll get to that point.
You wouldn't want to think, you know, yeah, yeah, I want to own a gun, but I wouldn't want everybody to be able to just, you know, bomb, you know, a, a place, a, a public place. So it's almost like we're nostalgic for the Cold War where we could just get back to, ah, I wish it was just us and Russia that were threatening the world. Not everybody. <laughs> right. But those ISIS people are first and foremost, before you even get into their fucking religion. They're crazy people. Just like when you meet anyone who's locked into their religion too much, you have to consider that mental illness. You know, you see it, when you hear about the people who come out of Scientology and you're like, what are you fucking nuts? Why did you put up with that shit as long as you did? Like everybody, uh, what's this chick that came out uh, from Leah? Uh, Remini. Leah, right, Remini. Leah Remini. And you're like, they're like, oh, she's so brave for getting out. And you're like, what the fuck were you doing in that shit in the 80s and 90s? Who are you, a fucking an, a waterhead? <laughs> Why were you running around like that all those years? And she's like, I gave them millions of dollars. What are you, stupid? <laughs> That's the worst part. And then, like, in the in the book or whatever, the excerpts that I read, she, yeah. she was apparently at the entire time she thought how crazy everything was. Like, that, it's, you know, she was, like, uh, cognizant of the time that this is insane. But I, I guess they were going to cut her off from her family or something. I, I'm not sure what the threat was of leaving Scientology, at least at the time. Uh, Spider said, this will probably be as effective as when the celebs ended hunger with We Are the World. Well, you don't see the kind of mass fucking starvation that we did back then. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, there's hungry people, but you don't see, you know, an entire fucking desert of people just laying there hungry. That was the craziest shit ever. That's when Kinnison did that fucking joke of why doesn't the uh, cameraman hand him a sandwich? <laughs> you know? I mean, it just looked like, and we were like, hey, you can't do anything about it. People are going to starve in great numbers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we didn't know what to do. <laughs> I guess, you know, in certain parts of the world, they just all lay down with their babies and their extended bellies, and, and you don't see that now. You know? Yeah, no. I mean, could happen again in a heartbeat, but you know, you can't act like some of these things aren't effective. Look, when you act like the the world can't change its mind, everybody used to smoke. Now, if you smoke, they act like you're a fucking maniac. Yeah, I'm a fucking pariah. They turned everybody's head around on that pretty quickly too. Like it's about twenty. It's been like a twenty year decline. It doesn't feel quickly if you're one of the people trying to do it or. You know what I mean? That's what frustrates people. When it doesn't happen within a week or two, you're like, this sucks. It is all long-range thinking. If you're going to f figure out what we're going to do with some of these communities that have heavy gun violence, like uh, Chicago, uh, the south side of Chicago, you're going to have to commit for decades. And people fucking hate to commit for decades. They hate it. You know? They just don't want to hear that. They want to hear within a couple of years, it's done. <laughs> and we moved on. Everything's great now. I gave my $25. It's done. The guns are gone now, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just like uh, green technology, right? It feels like it's going so slow. But it wasn't that long ago. It didn't even exist at all. You didn't have people doing the things that they're doing now. Now people are becoming incredibly rich with green technology. But that used to be considered something that a, a, a maniac would do, you know? Solar panels. Yeah. You're not going to make any fucking like, money on solar panels, dude. <laughs> like some crazy guy in the woods. <laughs> right. With his solar panels. Like, what a weirdo. But over time, it happens. I think, really, if you look at the gun thing, the only way to get a grip on it is going to be through technology because you can't take away without giving something right yeah you have to come up with a technology that is non-lethal but ends the situation something that you're not stunning someone who comes into your house and they're laying down that you're fucking knocking their shit out but it's almost like a phaser on stun right yeah now that seems like it can't fucking happen it's sci-fi but we went to the moon, and that was fucking sci-fi. So if you had this non-lethal thing, or you just heard, like, let's say 20, 30 years ago, some maniac ran into the mall and knocked 50 people out. <laughs> You're like, okay, that fucking guy should go to jail. <laughs> he went in there and knocked out all those people. He stunned them. They, and when they woke up, they had a headache. They fell. They fell down. It would be a better situation. And if everyone would thought, okay, well, this is a gun now. This is what guns do. Yeah. 
You know? Knock you unconscious. They knock you the fuck out. And if anyone comes into my house, I'm knocking that bitch out. <laughs> Until the fucking police get there. He's fucking knocked out. I might even went over and stun him again while he's laying there. Make sure. So that's the kind of commitment. Because when people have guns, it's a way of saying, I'm afraid. I'm afraid in my house. I'm scared. I'm an afraid person. That fucking George Zimmerman was a guy who shot an unarmed man because he was afraid he was getting his ass beat, right? Yeah. Now, there's not a movie in the world that we would root for the guy who shot an unarmed kid because he was afraid. That's the exact opposite of whatever we go to the movies to see, right? <laughs> but suppose he just stunned the kid. And then yeah. the cops came around later, and they go, why'd you stun this fucking kid? He I lived was, right there. Yeah, yeah. He, he was going home. And then George Zimmerman could have said, look, I'm sorry. I'm going to pay the $800. And I'm going to make up for the t- I'm going to pay him for the time that he was unconscious, <laughs> that he could have been doing other shit. I'm going to put my stun gun away, or I'm going to be fine. <laughs> All right, I'm go back to my neighborhood watch. <laughs> then that fucking person's gun gets turned into a light stun. All right. So <laughs> exactly. So it's an, an annoyance. But now here's the deal. What, if this technology existed, would the people be okay with it? Or do they go, I really would rather have a lethal weapon? I feel like people would say, I really want a lethal weapon. This is my gun. This is my the fucking OG definition of a gun. And people still be just fucking, no, I, I want to be able to go to the gun range. Only there'll be a stun range. Or maybe there will be with the advent of this new stun gun. All right. Bobby says uh, Leah was born into Scientology. Yeah. And then you fucking grow up, Bobby. You don't have to fucking stay around and believe whatever your parents believe. That's crazy talk. That's not something an adult does. Damn, her parents have been real fucking nuts. If they were, the fucking- I love it when people are like, uh, well, I wasn't raised that way. So what? <laughs> now you've got the information. You're an adult, right? <laughs> <laughs> now you can work out your own thing and take responsibility for it. Don't like doing that. Because <laughs> I got news for you. These moron fucking terrorists were raised that way. Yeah. From a young age, they were just fucking, yeah, this is how it is. The weird thing is, though, the people get turned or whatever the term they use, radicalized. Like, I guess these two fucking assholes and, and San Bernardino. That's the fucking weird thing. Where they, I guess they were just regular Muslims, but then something happens. And then, like, oh, wait, maybe all these other fucking crazy bastards. I don't know about the chick. I mean, the dude might have been. But let me tell you, you know, somebody you're sleeping with has fucking heavy thoughts. Sooner or later, you either get away from that person or you you buy in. Yeah. You can't be both. She never shuts up about it. Yeah. I mean, she's just fucking like, oh, I don't know. Thoughts was. Uh, Carl, what's up? Carl. Yeah, Ronnie. Yeah, Carl buddy. From Maine. Hey, you just uh, made a statement that I disagree with. You said that uh, people that keep guns in their house uh, have them because they're afraid. Yeah. And and I'm not afraid because I have guns in my house and because I have a concealed carry permit. Exactly. Carl, um, that's a, that that was my point. You were you're afraid not to have a gun, and I get that. Well, it's not afraid. It's a preparedness. Yes, yes you're, you're afraid, not afraid not to be prepared. You think that that gun brings you safety. I get that fucking feeling immediately. I get it. I understand it. Now, with the new improved stun gun, the Star Trek stun gun, you never have to be afraid again, nor do you have to worry about shooting somebody and fucking up. Because let's suppose this. Oh, my brother-in-law was in the garage trying to steal my beer. This shit happens all the time. (laughs) All I did was knock his ass out. (laughs) Ends up just somebody hiding in the closet. Ready to scare you. So, yeah, I'm not saying that you're afraid when you're walking around with your gun. I'm saying you were afraid, so you got a gun, and now you feel safe. I get that feeling. Now, what happens with that is somebody else is afraid because the other guy has a gun. You know, if you're in the, I don't know, it used to be called the ghetto. I don't know what it's called anymore. Urban area. The trap. And you find out that the other kids have a gun. That's a pretty scary thought. What do you have to do? You have to go get a gun. So you feel less afraid, and then you shoot each other. Or a place with this with stunners. With the Star Trek stun gun, all you did was knock each other out. A lot of people sleeping in the hood. <laughs> the hood sleeps tonight. <laughs> you go in some fucking neighborhood, just people pass out all over. What happened Everybody's here? Been stunned. No, no, no. That's just methadone. <laughs> oh. <okay. laughs> Those are the nods. They're already Maybe that's the thing. Out. You just fucking hit everybody with heroin. 
fucking blow dart. I kind of said, what we need is bulletproof shields to walk around with. <laughs> or metal armor. Not too heavy. Um, Scott, in Detroit. Scott. Hey, I love the show. Um, I'm a retired police officer, and I can say, in my opinion, that there are a lot of police officers out there that are afraid to shoot their gun because of the penalties they'll get from not only the police department, but civilly as well. And it's, you know, no one wants to be out there in the wild, wild west. But at the same time, you know, the department would look at it from the standpoint, you can't shoot them until they shoot you. Well, I'm not going to sit around here and wait for them to shoot me, but the reality is, even if they did shoot at me and I shot back, I'm still fearful that I'm going to get problems with the department and certainly a civil lawsuit involved in that. Yeah, and that's probably, you know, a pretty good way to think, though, right? Like, it's better not to use this gun. Yeah, you know. and, and and there's a there's a, a a paradigm that you look at on different levels of resistance from the suspect. Now, if they're passive resistance, say they're they're protesting something and they're just sitting on their hands, they're not physically fighting you. You're, you're allowed to go one step above that, and I and and I can you know physically touch them and take them into custody. I can't just sit on my hands too. I can't equal it out. And it's that one pyramid that you are one step ahead of them into the gunfight. When it comes to the gunfight, you, you know, if you feel your life is threatened, you can take that shot. But every cop knows that if I do that, I'm in compliance with the department, but I know I'm going to get repercussions from it, and I know I'm going to be facing that lawsuit. So no matter what happens, once you fire that weapon, your life has changed. You're in hot water. And, and, just, and just to make another comment about that as well, there are non-lethal weapons out there. The beanbag gun is a very effective way. And looking back at the Chicago incident, there were so many police officers on the scene at the time of that shooting that if one of the officers did use the beanbag gun, it's very possible that that would have knocked that individual off his feet or incapacitate him in some way that the officers could have gone in and, and restrained him at that point. Not saying it's 100% effective, but there are tools out there to use. It's just you hardly ever hear that they're being used. Um. All right, thanks, man. All right, take care. Peace. I, I could never do it, like what's going through his head. I just, it would be too difficult for me to pull out. Um, here is uh, Jeff, hey, Cherry, uh, Hill. Yeah, Cherry Hill. Yeah, Turn so your radio I'm calling, down. I'm, I'm calling from uh, New Jersey where guns are pretty much illegal altogether. You can get them, you can carry, you can have them in your house. But you were talking about, you know, like some magical stun gun. and Yeah, Star know, Trek stun yeah, but phaser they're, they're set on like, stun. They have they have tasers and 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 stun those things suck. I don't know whether you ever saw they're, they're Star they're Trek. Illegal. That, that's that fucking gun was unbelievable. And everybody would do it. Yeah. Here was a th- weird thing about Star Trek too. You can set it on stun or kill. And you're like, <laughs> why not just set it on stun first? <laughs> and then once you stun them, you're so fucking furious, you just go over and kill them. Want to be sure with these aliens? Yeah, I don't trust them at all. Now here is, is the bad thing about the phaser on fucking stun. <laughs> you don't want to shoot anybody near a river because if they fall into the river, they drown, they wash away. Everybody's like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> you're you're so- not sick. Look, I made a mistake. I fucking stunned the lifeguard. I didn't know. Get off my ass. This barely happens anymore. He was trying to save you. Now, the other thing that'll work about the Star Trek uh, stunner is for suicidal people. They could just sit there and stun their head. When they wake up, they're still fucking mad. Yeah. So you're (laughs) killing yourself, but just for a short amount of time. I'll probably use mine when I get on plane. Just fucking stun (laughs) my head. Oh, that sounds great. Wake up in L.A. (laughs) (laughs) Turn the brain off. Uh, Will. In Georgia, Will. Yes. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Um, nothing much, man. Just uh, listen to the show. That's great. And uh heard the cop call in saying most cops are afraid to use their guns because they could open themselves up to civil liability, Yeah, which is sort of true. But in general, no. Most agents of the government, and in this case, uh, police officers, are they're shielded from any civil suits uh, for what they do in the line of duty. Uh, it's called... Immunity. All right, well, here's the thing. None of us want to be caught up in a lawsuit. None of us yeah, want to true. change our lives, go to 
court, give testimony. I mean, for you, that's a normal day. For the rest of us, it's a fucking nightmare. It's the worst. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a nightmare for me, too, man. Uh, it's not fun. I don't even want to talk to HR and be on the record, you know? Yeah, and I've got true. two complaints against Joey Jojo for half shirts. Good. Yeah, yeah. It's on. <laughs> it's. It, it doesn't make me feel safe at work. Cover that fucking navel for once. Just one day. <laughs> Thanks for backing me up. No I, chance. I filed one just for his high-waisted jeans. <laughs> God, the way he got into that yesterday. <laughs> Seriously, that was my most embarrassing moment on, on the air in my career. <laughs> high-waisted jeans, high shirts. Show off just a little midriff. Uh, Matt in New Hampshire. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. You still talk, talking about guns? No, I have never talked about guns. What I'm talking about is a Star Trek phaser set on stun. Why can't we put our money into that? Because the only thing that's going to make people feel better is a, the feeling of safety. Uh, yeah, hold on. Uh, Danny Go, uh, Go Lightly is going to get a bagel. Oh. No, Esther Koo is in Asia right now. <laughs> Makes sense. That's fucking racist. Well, I, I said... I hate racism. Oh, not, Me too. I didn't think that was racist. Especially coming out of dirty limeys like yourself. <laughs> and your fucking skin that you gotta sit around and eat citrus just to make it the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Do me a favor. Give this fucker an orange. His skin is sickening. <laughs> so what is it, Matt? Well, I'm a big gun guy up here in New Hampshire. Um, and you could, you could take my guns if you can guarantee me that no one's gonna kick in my door with a gun. I have no problem giving up, giving up, uh, giving up my guns. But you can never guarantee someone that that's not going to happen. We're going to replace so. all the guns with Star Trek phasers, and you're going to get a Star Trek phaser. All right. And you're going to fucking love mail. it, dude. Thank you. You're just no. be firing it off constantly, family members. <laughs> and first of all, you live in New Hampshire, and there's no fucking crime there. You got nothing to worry about. You're good. Yeah. There's more bears than crime up there. And I guess there's bears. Yeah, I guess that's not a good thing. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> will, will there be a bear sized stunner? Yes. Uh, I've gotten this question many times. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Is when we were brainstorming this, that came up first day. This, this phaser can stun an elephant, wow. a whale, and believe it or not, a squad. You'll be able to take out a full oh, squad. Oh, nice. <laughs> that's going to make the app so much more interesting. Um, Mark, Michigan. What's up, buddy? Not much. How are you? Cool. What can we do for you? No, I was just telling, I, I was listening to the radio station there, and you had somebody on there talking about police officers who, when, uh, you know, they use their guns, they're immune from prosecution. Yeah, that was a Georgia lawyer. A sweet There's Georgia lawyer. Dudes, and that, that's, that's not even close. We, uh, I was involved in a shooting um, as a police officer. And it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, they're going to sue you. So right. immunity, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't, it's civil liability, um, you know, you're going to get sued. I mean, even if you're right, and we were right in my situation, and we got sued, and we paid out almost $900,000, and we were totally right. Well, where would you get the 900000 from? Well, 900000 came from a um, a settlement based on, the fact that uh, I worked in a um, I worked in a uh, city, a, a suburb of Detroit, and they what they do is they there's a panel of attorneys that look at your case and they make a determination that if you go to court, there may be a possibility you're going to pay out X amount of dollars, and so it's a business decision a lot of times for the cities, and so for that guy to say that. You know, we're immune from it as long and, as And how out. much of your life was caught up in that, too? How many years did this whole thing go on? Well, this was, uh, well, it happened in 2005, and I think it was done in 2007. See, that's what we don't want. We don't want two years where suddenly you start to know law <laughs> and legal terms. <laughs> you just want to be away from those guys. All right, thanks for calling, Mark. Uh, that's the thing I don't think lawyers ever understand. We don't want to be there. We don't like it. It's a fucking nightmare to be anywhere near a courtroom. That's why the Star Trek phaser is the future. Uh, Lou, Lou in Michigan. Yeah, hey, how you doing? Good. So I was just going to say, the only problem with the Star Trek phaser is once you get done phasing a fellow, he's going to wake up and shoot your ass for phasing him. Yeah, he doesn't have a gun, though. 
No. You took it off him while he was phased out. He's yeah. got another phaser. If right. that, if and then that. you go and wipe your ass with three shells. And life is fucking great. <laughs> and don't curse. My point, to, although silly, is this. Technology is the only way out of this. Technology is the only way out of this mess. Like, technology starts trouble, technology solves trouble. You've got to start to look to the future. You're not going to take away something from people without giving them something else. That's what diets have never been able to understand. <laughs> if you take away a fucking cheeseburger, you got to give somebody something that tastes as good as a cheeseburger, or else you're going to go back to cheeseburger. Give me the good taste. That's all I want all the time. I mean, there was the kid who came up with the... The smart gun idea, which, you know, it doesn't solve all the problems, but that's certainly a, a very clever way of solving part of the thing. You're not going to have the instance of, a you know, the five year old going through the underwear drawer, finding a gun and shooting himself. You're not going to have illegal gun trade. You know where that gun is being sold? Where is that? Nowhere. Yeah. Because they don't want smart guns because they're afraid as soon as you get a smart gun, you won't be able to sell any other kind of gun. With a phaser, okay? <laughs> a straight phaser. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't fucking want that? A dumb phaser. Yeah. I'd rather have that <laughs> than any other gun. It seems more you could do more things with the phaser than the gun. Right. I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a lot more phaser owners than gun owners in this country immediately. A, a gun owner is going to look... Like a fucking Amish dude with a horse and buggy. Yeah, like Kate, he'll be a fucking Kate. Matter of fact, if I go past them, because there's a lot of them that live where my parents is, I'm just stunning them out the fucking window. <laughs> and then I'll pay the 800 if I get caught. <laughs> so it's 800 no matter what? Yeah. Not me for I think it sounds like a good thing. I mean, that stops me from doing stuff. Right? Oh, just, yeah. Fuck yes. Yeah. It's a flat federal fine. Uh, Josh. <laughs> Hey, guys, I just wanted to go geek on you. You were saying Star Trek, the phaser, everybody knows that. Yeah. What about the Stargate, that Nicotel? Uh, Josh, let's stop being silly, okay? We're talking yeah. <laughs> about a nice phaser. Stargate is ridiculous. It's Star Trek, oh. dead on. Yeah, Stargate's fucking goddamn going to other dimensions. No, thank you. No, thank you from Chris. No, thank you. Not one of Kurt Russell's better films. I didn't know that Kurt Russell made a bad film. You know why? It has Kurt Russell in it. <laughs> so it has that going for it. Yeah. No matter that what. That sounds like a good movie. <laughs> we'll be seeing some Kurt Russell tonight. Mm-hmm. So excited. I'm going to uh, cap it wrong. <laughs> Please do that. Please. I like the idea that it's just going to be probably press in there. My favorite. Cut and run. <laughs> What's up, dude? I like. Uh, What's up? Blah. I like my favorite Captain Ron scene is when the the other guy's like looking at chicken. He's like, she, it's not looking. At, really? Clarice, were you looking at me or him? <laughs> He's so fucking funny. He's or when the fucking kids are playing Monopoly or something, and the parents are banging in the fucking. He's like, your dad was hiding the slum with your mom in there. <laughs> 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 fucking Captain Ron, why wasn't there a sequel to that movie? Because no one went to the first one. I watched that. I had not seen that at least fucking fifty times, Captain. I made my parents watch that. I was like, we're putting Captain Ron on again. Sure, boss. We're just gonna let the tides do the rest of it. <laughs> gorillas. I said gorillas. Dude, speaking of which, we're supposed to do our contest. That's right. Tito's Holiday Spirit. Tito's Holiday Spirit is brought to you by Tito's Handmade Vodka. Tito's Handmade Vodka is America's original craft vodka distilled six times from 100% corn and naturally gluten-free. Come visit us at titosvodka.com. Uh, Shane. Shane, what's up? Hey, Ronnie B. Yeah. How y'all doing? Yeah. Hey, I was kind of curious, man. Uh, how, what kind of noise is, or sound is that Peter going to make? It's cool. Um, David, David, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah. Hey, Ronnie B, I carry around a, uh, I, you got to be pretty athletic, but if you're able to carry around, I have a piece, uh, I have a ball that's made out of metal, and it's in between the size of a baseball and a golf ball. Uh -huh. I, car I carry that around with me, and if somebody just happened to fuck me, it at least would give me a chance, because I chucked that fucker so hard, it would fuck the guy up pretty bad. It'd kill you. See, I just but use Chinese stars. Very cool. Chinese and Death Stars. You know what I like about those? Easy yeah. to conceal. Um, Danner. Danner, Michigan. Hey, uh, Ronnie, I, I love your knockout gun idea. Thanks. Uh, it's a great one. I'm worried about the collectors, though. 
Uh, the collectors, I'll just say this, they're going to be every football team will be represented, so you can collect all of them, and also some 70s sex objects. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, yeah, get your fair faucet, get your Sherlad. No, like 90s or 2000s sex No, object? no, no, we're working on the 70s first. I got a Julie Christie that I am mad for. Uh, Jerry, Oklahoma. Hey, Ron, yeah. I was thinking about incorporating, you know, the brown ray frequency that makes you crap your pants. If we could incorporate that into your Star Trek phase, or so that way if your brother-in-law tries to steal your beer, instead of knocking him out, you can just make him shit himself and sit in his shed. How do you, you feel about a brown note gun? Well, I was going with yellow, but now that we're going brown, <laughs> yeah, I think you could just set yellow, brown. <laughs> if it's brown, shoot it down. That's and, what By the way, you almost have a series, so you'll be like this. Julie Christie, set on brown. <laughs> oh. And you'll be able to use, it'll sound like Julie Christie is telling you, <laughs> he just shit his pants. It's kind of sexy. Real sexy. <laughs> but, you know, it's going to take time. I got to get back to the garage to get this going, you know? Yeah. That's where all great tech companies are formed, in the garage. Uh, I have a Davenport, so, you know, there's no walls on the side. I don't know whether that'll be as good. I think the open air is good for the thinking. <laughs> they say brainwaves come from the sun. <laughs> now, will you invest with me, Shark Tanks? I'll fucking come on Shark Tank. <laughs> and then they just fucking wake up like 15 minutes later, and I'll just be standing there. Now that I got your attention. <laughs> And if Barbara's like, I don't see this, I'm out. I just fucking knock her out. You want the same thing happen to you, Cuban? <laughs> I'm interested in Cuban and Robert, to tell you the truth. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to just fucking, you know, I don't want FUBU written on the side of it. Well, I mean, what if he's involved to throw a good amount of money? <laughs> what's, his guy, what's his name? Uh, I don't know. I like Robert. That's yeah, who Robert, I want. Uh, I saw uh, coming out of the hotel. What's the hotel in the park that's been there? The plaza, yeah, and Robert was coming out of the plaza and went into like a limo, and I'm like, "Stop it, a Robert. limo, really? Yeah, stop it, Robert. Robert, stop come living on. your fucking sissy dream." Damon, Damon's the football guy. All right, this is what kills me about Damon, right? The fucking thing that he started was for us, by us, for black people, made by black people, and now he'll fucking do it. He'll, he'll slap his logo on anything that comes out of China. Yeah, yeah. it's not fubu at all, dude. It's for you. <laughs> By Chinese. That should be the name of it. He should lose the name to somebody else who wants to actually do it. Also, he says no to everything. He's, I think he's got to have the least amount of yeses. Unless the person's black, and then he's very interested. Huh. I see what you're saying. Something about this guy I like. So a hip-hop Christmas uh, ornament. Hmm. I, think I will give you the ten thousand dollars that you're asking for, but I want ninety three percent of your business. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Can I have the money now before I leave the studio? And this is final offer time. I don't, you know, if I don't get it uh, 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 back in five seconds, yeah, I'm out. That means it's a bad deal. Yeah. If ah, someone says, says, "Don't think about this." Yeah. You get zero time to think. You don't want to know what's really going to happen here. <laughs> I like the number I'm throwing at you, right? Bum, 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 bum. This is Chris Stanley, and he has a new Army Man collection for everybody. I would have fucking cut your head off! <laughs> and then I would have gone straight down with you! Army Man, we love our little Army Man. I can't feel my right arm! It's because it's not there anymore! How is your arm? It's okay, I'm getting, like, pains, but... Yeah. Phantom pains. Yeah, phantom pains. <laughs> but I feel I feel like it's getting better. Feel like Let's see getting... you raise it up in the air. That's not far, dude. No, you don't think. It's... Let's see you do your left. Arm I think the same it's way. too far. Yeah, look like... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> How, do you not How do you not notice the difference? Be because I guess like, last, you have like... no awareness. <laughs> For like, the last six weeks, like I've, it's been like here in the slits. Yes, we so know that. That I could get it to like I don't know what percentage this would be. It feels pretty good, but I, no, there's no way I'm putting it straight up and it's like fucking behind my head. That's not going to happen. But then you're like, I don't know how it is. <laughs> that is the answer. Yeah, I can't. Now do everybody that. else has to stretch because he can't. I know. <laughs> I can stretch the left me... side. Like, yeah, this feels unnatural. All right, I know everybody wants to talk about stun guns, but I got to move on from that. But I appreciate all the calls from both sides. And 
you know, if you'd like to join in, uh, try to get Jenny Hutt to say the same thing as everybody. That'd be great. Why don't we break here? We come back. Your chance to win something big out of the big ass prize closet. Do you know what we have? Do you, we already know our prize. It's the album This Christmas by John Travolta and Olivia Newton John. Holy si- shit! Signed by John Travolta and Olivia Newton John. This is too big. I remember when they were here last year. Yeah. Doing that. Yeah. I didn't even know we had this prize. Yeah, we were able to get them to That's sign massive. it. That's massive. That's such a good gift, dude. To give we should have been pushing that all week. <laughs> We should have been. Yeah. All right. Eight four four Rock God. Eight four four Rock God. Now, by the way, I, I don't know whether everybody knows this. They had a hit album before, years before they did this Christmas album. What was that? Grease. Oh, oh. yeah. They they did a little movie You're called full Grease. Of facts, you know. Well, I like that fun toys. facts. You know. Yeah, they are always fun. Yeah. I don't like to do unfun factoids. No serious facts? Yeah. No, thank you. That's sad. Uh, last year, over 8,000 um, people died from dysentery in Boston alone. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is going on in Boston? Did you see they just had a Chipotle thing there? Yeah. So I write to Molly, don't eat that, that Chipotle. She goes, I was there on Friday. She goes, it must be just strong. I was there yesterday. I was there well, you weren't night. at the Boston one. Not the Boston one. one. Oh, I thought maybe it was happening everywhere. But, well, they have, Chipotle seems like they've had more problems than everyone else. Yeah. yeah. No, they had I, a bunch on the West Coast that were all fucked up, too. I try, I just sit around and do some thinking about this. Mm-hmm. I never remember hearing about this with McDonald's or Burger King, Jack in the Box, no, you know, was, Denny's. E. coli, I mean, it would usually mean it's over. Like, it's done. Like, they can't, they won't get any more fucking business if it happened in the past. Yeah, but it's only at one uh, c- certain stores. What I'm trying to say is, how come you never heard of that happen before? All right, 844-ROCK-GOD, 844-ROCK-GOD. Call in and win right now. It's John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John signed. DVD. This is a spectacular prize. I didn't know we had. Our guys are too stupid to bring it up like it was a big thing. Yeah. We could have been selling this through promos all week. Yes, we should have been. Are we doing one of these next week? Yes. You got another big prize like this? We got we got a big prize. What's it going to be? It's going to be Trading Places signed by Dan Aykroyd. And? Dan Aykroyd. Just one person. He signed it See, twice? That's not as big as this because you got both. Both of them down there. This should have been our grand prize. Yeah, this is a big. You give this to your wife or mother in law, and that's a once in a lifetime gift. You know what I mean? It's a perfect Christmas gift. And I remember I walked in here last year. So those two were sitting in there, and everybody that walked by just stopped and they went, Holy shit. Like if John Travolta here was here the other day, that was kind of cool. But John Travolta and Olivia Newton John. No, that's crazy. That's history. If Olivia Newton John was by yourself, you'd be like, "Oh, that's great," but with John Travolta, forget about it. Danny and Sandy together at last. The feelings people have for those two—it's unbelievable. Loved. All right, so there's one of the things that should come up at our meetings that we could have made a massive promo about this, and uh, you know, Don would have been excited about it. We need some thinking in the production side, but we're giving this away next. We'll be right back to play you a Tito's holiday uh, version of a movie. And you have to tell us what movie it is. We'll be right back. This is The Bennington Show. Yeah! Look out! Here comes the Spider-Man. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's The Bennington Show about to give out, I think, one of the best prizes we've ever given out before. It is John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John singing Christmas carols. This uh, Christmas. Yeah, you've got an Aussie and a Scientologist singing you Christmas carols. Easy way to win, Chris. All you have to do is identify the film that we are, the Bennington Show players are acting out in this so piece. So what, what I need you to do is just billboard it. The way uh, that you do. Okay. Tito's Holiday Spirit. It's brought to you by Tito's Handmade Vodka. Tito's Handmade Vodka is America's original craft vodka, distilled six times from 100% corn and naturally gluten-free. Come visit us at titosvodka.com. Yeah, you just had a big celebrity sighting down the hall. Yes, I did. I I think, I believe I saw Marion, and I don't know how to say her last name. but Cotillard. Yeah, but it's like French, so it's like Cotillard. You know, like yeah, there's no, no vowels in there. I don't know how to there. do the French part. Cotillard? Um, 
uh, <laughs> coddled, but she's so stunningly beautiful. She's so beautiful. Inception, Big Fish, Midnight in in Paris, Nevi and Rose. Yeah, where she was the little bird. That was my my perfect. She was in um, the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous French woman. So stunning. Speaking of gorgeous, uh, up on the I Bank today, uh, Big J's birthday party, and there's just a great pic a Big J on stage and Amy Hawthorne has uh, written up the article. It's all part of caught in the act where once a week, and look, there's a picture of big J's cake. It's really oh, nice. Cute. nice. Who doesn't like big J? Nobody. Nobody doesn't like big J. Nobody doesn't like him. Everybody likes big J. Everybody. Yeah, but nobody doesn't like him. That's more important. Nobody doesn't like that guy. So, great picture of him and a little story about his birthday party. David Tell dropped in. Kevin Nealon dropped in. Star studded. Doing love to Big J. Um, all right. So, we're about to play this contest by the Bennington Show players. All you have to do is pick the movie, and you win the prize. Of prizes, a Christmas album signed by Olivia Newton, Newton John, and John Travolta. Unbelievable. Let's take a listen. Tell us what movie this is. And now it's time for Tito's Holiday Spirit. Listen as the Bennington Show players reenact the holiday classics of yesteryear. Before we begin, since this is Aunt Bethany's 80th Christmas, I think she should lead us in the saint of grace. Aww. What, dear? Grace! Grace? She passed away 30 years ago. They want you to say grace. The blessing. I pledge allegiance to Tito's Handcrafted Vodka, America's original craft vodka. Winner of the unanimous Judge's Choice Double Gold Medal at the World Spirits Competition and the Chairman's Trophy for World's Best Vodka Tonic. One One vodka, handcrafted, handcrafted, to to savored responsibly, with with a a modest paper paper label and and simple bottle. bottle. Amen. Catherine? This turkey tastes half as good as it looks. I think we're in for a very big treat. <laughs> Save the neck for me, Clark. <laughs> I'm sorry. Why are you crying? I told you we put it in too early. It's just a little dry. It's fine. Here's the heart. Aunt Bethany, does your cat by chance happen to eat jello? I don't know about the cat, but I sure am enjoying it. Hey, kids, I heard on the news that an airline pilot spotted Tito's sled on its way from Austin, Texas. You serious, Clark? And there it is. No music on the way out. That is our uh, holiday, Tito's holiday contest. All you got to do is tell us what movie that comes from. But I got to tell you the truth. Uh, I think this is better than the movie. It's solid. The Bennington players, they really did it this time. Yeah, it might throw you off because it's done so goddamn well. Um, Great, great prize. Kendall, what do you got? Christmas vacation, bitches! Correct! Tito's Holiday Spirits brought to you by Tito's Handmade Vodka. Tito's Handmade Vodka is America's original craft vodka. Distilled six times from 100% corn and naturally gluten-free. Come visit us at titosvodka.com. That was nice. The Bennington players did it again. I actually admire him for being around his full family and just having a night like that, too. Great Clark, Joe. You did great. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's Star they, and row. Yeah, that's why they call you one take. <laughs> Only one take. <laughs> Dude, did you save all the stuff of trying to correct that? 
a behind the, the directing scenes directing session. This should, yeah, it, yeah, it should be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we, might be part it. of the Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> that might be part of the Christmas special. <laughs> we'll have to listen back. Yeah, go back and listen to it. Okay, because I want to play all these when we're away on Christmas break. But I would love to have some of that going through it. Yeah, I, yeah. The, it's the CDs are still upstairs. That's hilarious. A director's cut, if you will, <laughs> of the making of Tito's Holiday Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's tech savvy. Oh, uh, see, Liz sets fire even though that was va- she just put vacation. Would you accept it, that, Chris? Or no, it's Christmas vacation. I thought that you'd even make him say National Lampoon's Christmas vacation. <laughs> that would have been my rule. Christmas vacation was the answer. Oh my God, Where, where's your energy go? <laughs> you are so fucking fun out on the street, and in here he's like, Christmas vacation is the answer. That's it. <laughs> That's what I've chosen. Um, why are people holding on when the guess was already made? I feel for them. Bros, leaving. you didn't get picked. You didn't get the right answer. Doesn't mean we don't care about you. No, we do care. Because even the losers get lucky sometimes. I think Tom Petty taught us that perfectly well. Stephen Colbert's numbers have fallen so low that he is now trailing behind Seth Meyers. And Seth Meyers is an hour after him. Wow. Yeah. I did not know. I I imagine that it was not uh, an easy transition, but I did not think that it was uh, that bad. I wonder how he feels about himself because he does the whole thing like Lake me. Like he's he's not the right wing guy, but he keeps it all about himself and his face is everywhere. Right. And then when you're finishing behind Seth Myers, who wasn't even on yet, you're losing to a guy who's not even on TV yet. That's bad. He's got to be falling apart. You think, or not even care? I think I think he puts up a facade that he doesn't care, but I think he's fuck. He must, he's got to be freaked. He definitely strikes me as a guy who would be destroyed over that news. Well, he's got to know that he's got a bridge that leads right back to Comedy Central, which is more money than anybody he ever went to high school with. I don't think he worries about it. I think he's like whatever. People don't like me. What do I care? Doing the show I want to do. I don't know why that, that, I mean, that's the thing that needs to be corrected. He's got to get rid of that second important guest of the night, you know, the guy who invented a new app or who's running for government. Nobody wants that uh, on a network show. Do you think people are turned off by him as a song and dance man? Yes, I am. Don't like it at all. He just inserts himself in anything. Anyone who has a microphone in their face who's a musician. Well, it's pile on time, isn't it, Chris Stanley? It's pile on time. I loved now. him. I loved goddamn Colbert. I don't like this new show at all. Broke my heart. You were the biggest Colbert fan. Yeah, I was. This. And now he's just playing games and fucking singing songs and doing God knows what else. But you think that that would make you stick with him, support your uh, your guy? Nope. Captain Z says, Ron, I was on hold to get your address since Stanley won't email me back. Ha ha. Well, got, I, I don't know what that means. He got an email three days ago, Captain D. Send him another one. He's upset. All right, Captain D, I'm going to re-forward the email I already sent you. Please don't upset Captain you D. You act like you like Captain Ron so much. What about Captain D? <laughs> Love the captain. Carla said that was the easiest prize one ever, particularly when you figure... It was the best prize we've probably ever given out. Certainly the best Christmas prize. Oh, it was such a good prize. Where's Vito at? It's right here. Send Vito in. Come on in, Vito. Send in my Vito. Send in the Vites. <laughs> <laughs> there ought to be Vites. Look at Vite. He's fucking fantastic. Love that dude. Yeah. Have a seat, Vito. What's up, squad, bro? You know how you're looking to have a place for yourself in the world, right? Yeah. And you were going to introduce Ron Bennington interviews to iTunes. You're going to introduce Unmasked to iTunes? Yes. Because you said you're my tech guy, right? You're tech savvy. He's the founder. The other thing we need to do is figure out that prize closet and put together promos for him rather than just give away a great prize like that out of nowhere to the first caller. I got to get on that. Yeah. I got to. It's going to be your new project. I am the tech slash prize slash. And you founder. think this iTunes is the future, huh? I think iTunes, this Apple company. Yeah. Is really going places. They uh, have this MP3 player. Well, here's another thing. When we get some of our big guests in here, why aren't we scoping them? Or why aren't we YouTubing them? 
I'm then gonna, why don't we scope and YouTube at the same time? On every platform. That's going to be me. I'm going to yeah. be the social media slash. I like it. Oh. You get an Instagram thing. Yeah. Where Gail's showing up different handbags that <laughs> yeah. she likes. Yeah, exactly. That Unbox kind of stuff. Them. Gail came in with a giant handbag today. Yeah. I have, uh, well, two two giant bags. But that, that handbag is a mail sack. Yes. My friend actually made it for me. She She makes bags. Really? Yes. On a professional level? She does. Yeah. Check it out. ForeignDomestic.com. I Foreign Domestic? Foreign Domestic is the name of her clothing company. And she does like a lot of leather goods. But she made that from Do I know scraps. her? Um, no, you don't know her. But you have a lot of friends in the fashion industry. I do. I know. Uh, I don't know if it's .com. It might not be .com. But just Google Foreign Domestic Bags. Leather Bags. It's an oxymoron. Leather Goods. That's where I'm going to do all my Christmas shopping at. <laughs> uh, here's Kevin. Kevin in Jersey. Hey, Bennington. How's it going? Um, what's up? I got a spy report. Spy report? Yep. Uh, sorry to say, it sounds like your old pal Shelby has died. No. He was raped to death. Stop oh, it. That's on. not... Geez, seriously, Christ Kevin, Christ this is fucking Christmas. Why would you say something so stupid? You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. I dislike that. Shelby is alive and doing well, and he's the programmer of uh, which uh, podcasting group is that? He's with um, Louis J. Gomez's outfit. He's with Stand Up Labs. Thank you. This is why I need the a founder right. who's tech savvy. Yeah, exactly. I'm just an old train riding mule. What? <laughs> I said old train riding mule. Old, old train riding mule. Why would a mule ride a train? Uh, I figure like I ride the subway, and then just mule would be me. It's like I'm an old mule, but I'm not like a literal Ooh. mule. I thought you were like a drug mule when you said that. Oh, I didn't no. get it at all because I'm like, you mean like a mule train? <laughs> you know, which they used to. Uh, whatever. Um, there's a smart bandage in development and a tech savvy guy like you should know about it, Vito. I like how somebody else came up with tech savvy and now Vito's tech savvy. <laughs> it used to be Joe. We have so many tech savvy guys. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a, it's a, like a malleable, um, bandage that you will actually be able to insert, uh, electronics into that's going to help heal the body faster. So if you have a wound, you're going to put on this gel-like bandage, and there's going to be little bits of hardware in there that is either going to help you heal by different methods. I think one of them is even um, uh, shooting like medicine to the specific place, or it's crazy. You're we're we're getting closer and closer each day to becoming cyborgs. Yeah, eternity is at our grasp. Luckily, I'll die right before it happens because I don't want to be part of that. But I I do like the fact that you just don't put a bandage on something and then leave it forever. Yeah, because that doesn't make any now, sense. Now, do these still hurt when you tear them off? Or <laughs> I think they feel good when you tear them off. Yeah, because it looks like a nice little piece of Jello. Just stuck mm. onto your arm, and no, then they're going to put Jello there. And then his, you know, this this professor from MIT also was saying, uh, you know, the idea is for it to be used internally as well. Like they're working on this first, but there might be one of these around your kidney. Exactly, and it'll be shooting little. I'm sorry, Gil. We have a spy report. Yes, Joe. What is your spy report? Yes, I got a spy report that um, that last caller, Kevin. He got so fucked up that he's actually dead now. Oh, oh no. no! I love that dude. He was so fun. Not Kev. Like he had the whole thing about Shelby. Yeah, really funny too. Yeah. Like he was fun and funny. Um, where my tech savvy guy knew it, and then my old train mule just said, <laughs> "Be down there, part of Louis J. Gomez's outfit." <laughs> <laughs> you got your French fiber hater in there. <laughs> I mustard. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually, uh, remember, uh, we were talking yesterday came up, uh, from Dan Soder where he said, you could have a TV show and just have cheers, a TV network, cheers, Seinfeld, friends and Frasier. And that's all you would need. And, and it would be successful. 
I would never need to put on another channel. Now, it's really funny. A lot of negative stuff comes up about friends now of being anti-gay and uh, anti-transgender. Seinfeld gets a lot of anti-gay beef on him because stuff that was considered anti-gay now wasn't considered that in the early 70s. I don't know if you could do a Cheers without one of those guys having an alcohol problem. (laughs) And no one did. You know, right. but is there any show that you could think of? Think of like a famous TV show. Could you put it on now without having to change it? Any famous sitcom? Um, too close for comfort? No, that stuff would not roll today. Well, I'm always interested in the fact that I Love Lucy still has really you know, they still have that those gender roles that are pretty ridiculous. But at the same time, there's an interracial couple, which I would imagine would have been insane. Yeah, but he was a band leader. So that helped quite a bit. Okay. Cuba, Cuba was a little bit romantic at that time. Uh, Cuba was considered more like Spain. Yeah. Than Puerto Rico. Um, but no, you wouldn't be able to get that because she, a man told her what she exactly. could and could not do and told her you're not to leave the house. Yes. And then if you even watch the other Lucy's, he still ran her life from the grave. That money was only doled out to her by a banker who wouldn't let her have the money that was left to her. Now, if you take a thing like the Andy Griffith show, which is beloved, right? Mm-hmm. Would that show be able to run as is today? Andy Griffith, like I, nothing comes to mind. I'm going to give you something to mind. There were no blacks in the South. Oh, there yeah. There was oh, never shit. a black character who showed up on that show. And you know, you're like, well, this is the South, dude. Have somebody working around there somewhere <laughs> who's a black dude. Yeah, I was going to say the same. Like I thought, I thought of one, but that would go under the same rules. Where I think um, the the Adams family or like the monsters, like because those jokes are so uh specific to they keep going to the same well, there probably wouldn't be, be too much dumb for TV today, you mean? Yeah. But I but I also think that there probably wouldn't be anything terribly offensive because it's kind of corny in one note, but you would never see a person of another, I don't think you would ever see a person of another race of like the Adams family no. or the monsters. First of all, if they did some of your phone would have rang and a neighbor would have called you and said, <laughs> You have this on right now? <laughs> Look at this. This is amazing. (laughs) This is the best show I've ever seen in my life. I think I Spy was the first time that blacks and whites were friends. Bill Cosby. And my favorite episode, uh, Raquel Welsh was on the show. Mm. She drank a Coke. She passed out. She got felt up. (laughs) It's a comedy, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course it's a comedy. Uh, But I don't know. Even if you look at Happy Days... In the 1950s. Um, well, first of all, I think people would be a lot angrier now that their haircuts were the 1970s. These fucking guys would not get out of the 70s long enough to have a 1950s haircut. Well, it's funny because Greece was the same way, which like there was so much of that going on where everyone loved the 50s so much of the 70s. Right. But every time there was a 50s movie or TV show, they would be very 70s. Yes. <laughs> very 70s. They didn't give a shit. <laughs> Chachi would have been considered, would have been run out of town for that haircut that he had if it was the 50s. Now, I feel for Happy Days, there was a lot of talk of kind of like sissiness, <laughs> like being soft and stuff. Such. Right. So that probably would seem pretty outdated now. Yeah, absolutely. Like, oh, he's a real pansy. <laughs> uh, Bill, what's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going, Ronnie B? Hey, man. Hey, hey I know it's a slam dunk, but you could never do it all in the family in today's PC world. Well, Charlie Bunker broke all the rules. You know, the funny thing is that a lot of people weren't crazy about Archie Bunker then. A lot of people were like, I get it. You're making fun of white people. I get it. Right. You know, you're Stephen Colbert, <laughs> even before he's born. I mean, you look at, I mean, wasn't it like George Jefferson when he kissed him or something in one of the episodes? It was just like. Well, it was Sammy know. Davis Jr. Sammy uh, Davis and he, he kissed him on the, on the lips. And, you know, America went crazy laughing. Ha ha. 
Archie was kissed by a black dude. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? He hates them. Yeah. <laughs> the worst possible thing that could yeah. happen to a person. <laughs> On a very special All in the Family. <laughs> well, what about Three's Company? Disgusting. Right? It's like really bad. It's like really horrible. <laughs> it actually makes fun of a couple different things. One, women are stupid as shit. Yeah. <laughs> Two, gay is something that you could fake and get away with by acting effeminate. Uh, and then finally, C, you could do an entire show without any real jokes in it whatsoever. <laughs> uh, that's the most offensive of those things. Yeah. What about the Brady Bunch? Brady Bunch is a good call because I feel like even though kids might not might need it to move faster, it was kind of ahead of his time because you were acting like a blended family, even of white people. That was still a big deal. Right, because they were, were they divorcees or were they They never widows? really said what happened to their exes, if we're going to be totally honest about it. I think both their exes, my belief was their exes ran off together. But <sighs> no one seemed to have ever missed their real dad or their real mom. Yeah, that's why I kind of always felt like it wasn't necessary. That aspect wasn't really necessary that show could have existed the exact same way e- did they if they ever, were- did the kids ever act like they didn't know each other like they ever like a get to know you period on that show no everything that happened well, the, i think the did, the didn't it so. really kind of start at the wedding wasn't the first show the wedding with uh, the dog ran through and fucked up the wedding oh right yeah so yeah um but I just feel like they didn't, maybe in later seasons, and that's what I'm thinking of, they didn't play on the fact that they were um, stepbrothers and sisters. No. Like, it was not they even necessary. They they were a straight family. Exactly. It's not like they were hooking up, at least on, you know, on screen. And work. no one ever says, like, Marsha, what was your dad like? <laughs> yeah. um, your actual dad. And you're the oldest. You probably remember. Now, he <laughs> ran off, I guess, with my mom. Because <laughs> they don't talk about it. <laughs> That's why I know them. Would the honeymooners be able to fly or just the, the threat of violence? Hell no. <laughs> no. Constant say he was on the table. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he used to barrel up his fucking fist when he, he looked at her. closed fist and shook it at her. But the greatest thing about that was uh, she didn't back down a bit. Mm, she no. was fucking hard. As a rock, that bitch. But imagine she had what a different tone the show would be. I think. Please, no. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm oh, I gotta do it, Alex. I'm sorry. I'm gonna do it. Please, the neighbors are here. I'm gonna break your forearm. Help me. <laughs> it's a comedy. <laughs> you want to get headbutted, Alex? I'll do it. You're going back to the hospital. I'm running out of excuses. <laughs> um, here's uh, Brian. Brian, what's up? Hey, you know how Hicks just said train mule and we're all going, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah. Look at his fucked up head. He's referencing a fish song called Ben of a Mule. Oh, yeah, I and remember that song. And if you play it. Is that what you meant? It actually <laughs> sounds just like Hicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes as much sense as Hicks. Um... Hey, David, what's up? Hey, Bennington's Merry Christmas. Uh, hey, thanks, buddy. I don't know why taxi... Well, you can't find taxi syndication anywhere. It was a fantastic show. Uh, it's tough to find. Uh, taxi was a very strange show because... It was about guys waiting for their taxi shift to start. Now, most shifts run about 24 hours. Yet, they ne- there was very little driving in the show and it was all about them sitting waiting for the cabs to come back as if they had all the time in the world i don't think most taxi drivers know each other no i don't think that they are feel like co-workers but how are you going to do that show without it being 100 percent pakistani or something you know yeah. <laughs> is there one one immigrant is that the idea that there was one immigrant Laka, who yeah. came from a country that doesn't exist and he was a mechanic he okay didn't drive. so he wasn't one of the drivers and there was yeah. the junkie who was just hanging out was he a driver or did he just hang out no, in the he garage? was a driver yeah but it would be eight guys sitting around with like smartphones and being like oh 
I just got a call. I got we a call. had to do a new thing called Uber. Yeah. Now, weirdly, when you're out in L.A., if you're near any of the uh, the hotels, there are always a bunch of taxis just sitting there, and then sometimes they get calls like to go to someone's house. But they don't drive around there. And I see them out sitting, talking, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's so weird to have a fucking cab that isn't, Getting paid at any moment. Okay. Yeah. Cabbies in New York just don't think that way. That was how it was down Mexico way as well. Like there would be little like hubs and stations in front of hotels or even little taxi stands. And then they would all be standing out there. But you couldn't just walk out on the street and hail a cab. Uh, here is Pat in Philly. Hey, guys. Uh, great show, guys. I, I got an easy one for you. Hogan Zeros. I mean, they're lovable. They're nice. Funny little Nazis running around. Schultz was lovable. Well, here, here's the deal with Hogan's Heroes. People were furious even then. Uh, I mean, you had, you know, concentration camp survivors who were watching the show, <laughs> and the Nazis were kind of fun and dumb and easy to trick. And then you would look <laughs> over, you know, if you were a survivor like that. And your kid or grandchild would be laughing at the show. And I guess the closest we could get is some funny show about 9-11. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if we can even equate that at all. No. Because I don't even think, I think we could look at an ISIS show and still laugh because it still feels far away. But for Jews living in America, seeing the very funny Hogan's Heroes it pissed a lot of people off. I have never seen an episode of Hogan's Heroes, so I've always been curious how how the humor even was. Well, I'll what just were say they this. joking about? It's fucking gold. <laughs> rations. They've talked about rations a lot. Well, see, <laughs> here's what's fun. happened. The guys are in a concentration camp, but they're really spies, right? They're American spies spying on Germany, getting in and out of this camp because it's so easy because the Nazis are, uh, you know, dung cuffs. They're just really stupid, silly. And you think to yourself when you're watching the show, I hope these Nazis survive the war, too. <laughs> you know, because they, they're good dudes. They're, they're silly. <laughs> uh, James, James, Nova Scotia. How you doing today? Hey, man. Um, I think a show that you could put on today and it would uh, stand the test of time is Barney Miller. It had an ensemble cast that dealt with a whole bunch of diversity issues, and it was it was just good humor. Um, how come that show never really plays in reruns either? It seems like that one should uh, do well. And that was a kind of version of a... Um, Hoda always waves was, to us. She's always nice. She's yeah. so nice, Hoda. Yeah, she's, I love Hoda. She's great. She's great in that fourth hour. I saw Hoda... It was either, and I saw her at a rock show, and I can't remember which one that was, but it was at the Beacon a couple of years ago. Hoda was a, with a pretty good looking dude. Is that right? Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with Hoda. Might have been the Dukes of September. Not sure. Nice. Yeah. Mm, you know, try to keep up. Uh, Helena. Helena, what's up? Hello. Hey. Bosom Buddies. No, they would never play Bosom Buddies today. Can't be done. Uh, first of all, you wouldn't have an all-women's hotel. <laughs> you could probably be sued for that. And B, no one sits ar around laughing at straight guys dressed as women attempting to work their breasts. Yeah, I mean, the name alone <laughs> tells you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get it? Because they're buddies who have bosoms. Get it? That show Bosom goes buddies. to show you at one time Tom Holt. Tom Hanks was broke. <laughs> had to take that thing. But I remember watching the show and laughing. I don't think I've ever seen an episode of Bosom Buddies. I should watch it on YouTube. Yeah. You've never seen one? No. I've never seen an episode of it. I've always heard about it. It never did well in the ratings. Only ran a couple of years, but uh, I think it was part of Gary Marshall's team. You know what I mean? So yeah. it should have worked. Uh, the guy... Here's the weird thing. If you get the guy who was his partner in it, but he went on to do uh, that Vermont show with Bob Newhart, and I would have guessed that that was the guy that was going to have the long career and not Hanks. Yeah. Hanks was good, 
But I thought the other guy was just amazing. Was Pe- like a good actor. Peter Scolari. Yeah, there he is. You can't even do that like sitcom trope anymore where like two guys dress up as girls and like get into the shenanigans that no, like, every sitcom used to do where it's like, yeah. oh, we have one episode where we have to be girls and it's hilarious. <laughs> Would Perfect Strangers be able to run today? Well, a guy, like a buddy finding his foreign... And I think he would be acting like Aziz gets their feelings right because oh, that yeah. guy wasn't foreign. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You would actually <laughs> have to put it. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't act like he's a two dimensional guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. He'd have to be like, hey, it's really hard being a minority in the United States. And then we'd all be like, yeah, it is. Uh, Gil. Hey, Ryan. Hello? Yeah. About Hogan's Heroes. They were in a prisoner at war camp, yeah. not a concentration camp. No, I understood that. And well, wait, and, before you say and, the, yeah. the, my point was the, the survivors of that and their families did not find Nazis very funny. They no. were still hunting Nazis at that time. Yeah. Now, you know, one of the actors, the guy that played LeBeau, was yeah. a, uh, had family that were in one of the camps. That's great tips. Thanks, Gil. All right, we're going to go far with that one. Appreciate it. Good tip. Uh, Eric, Eric, go ahead. Oh, hey, guys. Um, what about uh, news radio? I, I can't find a hole in that one. All right. News radio, it really isn't that old. Uh, mm-hmm. Certainly was a strong show. And was they went and kind of copied the set, I believe, from 1010 Winds, which was my sister station when I worked at NEW. And that's basically what it was. It was that kind of, you know, all the news every 10, 10 15 minutes, which is funny because... It's the worst kind of radio to be in. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just keep saying the same shit every fifth. Yeah. <laughs> Hoping for something to find. I mean, break. what's the longest you've ever listened? To me, I've never listened to 1010 Winds unless I'm going into a tunnel or a bridge. Like, yeah. You listen to the a, fucking traffic. You listen to a taxi cab. <laughs> they listen to that shit all day in the auto cabs. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it's the ones. I want traffic on the ones. Yeah. You listen to the one. That would be as maximum of 10 but it's minutes. But actually, that's, that show should have done a lot better. I loved it. I wonder if people don't like to watch it as much because they still feel bad that the one guy was murdered. Yeah, Phil, yeah. Then they went out, uh, Phil Martin died. Then they did a couple more seasons with like Andy Dick, I believe, replaced him. No, Andy Dick was on the show from Good, the beginning. Yes, John Lovitz replaced him. <laughs> but I like that you said <laughs> Phil Martin. <so. laughs> Who's he? <laughs> Uh, he was replaced by somebody else on the show who just sort of said he was You're his up. new replacement. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy in Oklahoma. The Rockford File. That's it's, it's why I became a private investigator. Now, the Rockford Files, there was talk about that show being rebooted with Vince Vaughn. Right? Uh, yeah. Vince Vaughn was a big fan of it. But I went back last year and watched because I'm like, man, Rockford Files, what a great fucking show. Can't wait to see it. It's going to be. A, and this show is so slow and stupid. <laughs> and the clues go nowhere. <laughs> and there's no logic to it. Now, uh, you know, Rockford is great. He's a great character. But the, the, and most of that was written. By David Chase, who went on to do The Sopranos. Wow. And I I dare you to watch The Rockford Files today. I think I've tried to watch an episode once. And it, I, I think I did it all last winter. <laughs> yeah, I've, like, I've only seen them when I went yeah. to your house and you were I'm like, like, Rockford Files is on. <laughs> and, and at first I thought I was going to love it. And then I'm like, I don't love this. I got to keep watching it. <laughs> I, and I was trying to figure out why did I think that yeah. this was so great when I was a kid? Because you had nothing compared it with. So. It was just flashy, shiny things on a TV. And you loved it. This is the only thing that was on. The TV is on, is what we would say. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody who was on TV was watched by millions and millions of people. Your show could get canceled for having 20 million people watching. It's crazy. It's crazy how unified. 20 million people be watching and people be like, this is a bomb. <laughs> I don't expect to see that around. Because you need it like 33, 35 million people to be a hit. A fifth of the country had to be watching your show, or you were shit. What else are they going to be doing? <laughs> <laughs> now that would be the biggest in the last decade. That's well, a I Super Bowl. W- I will say this: they are they're canceling American Idol after this season, and there's still bigger numbers there than the rest of TV. It's just not as big as they were at their peak. But I think what they're really doing is resting that show. Yeah, it's just you know. Um, 
Allen in Ohio. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, um, I was thinking about uh, WJRP in Cincinnati. Could it still work? Well, first of all, there's a lot less romance about radio than there used to be. Um, they were shooting a pilot, and they actually shot six episodes based on Sirius XM. Uh, who was doing that? That was, I, I believe it was, it was it, NBC. Yeah, but it was a comic. Oh, Dane Cook. Dane Cook was shooting yeah. it. Jeffrey Tambor was in it. Everybody said it was pretty terrific. Um, it looked to me like like Dane Cook was dressing like Opie. He was doing this hoodie thing, and we were so excited. They came in, checked out everything here. There's supposed to be a lot of jokes that are inside jokes aimed at our boss. I know people from this place who have seen it. They loved it. I don't. Something happened either between Dane and NBC or right. the producer and NBC. Something happened, but I would have loved to would have been the best. Well, well, there's a lot of TV shows about radio, a decent amount, right? I mean, there's new news radio. Um, Frasier was about radio. Yeah. Uh, was Murphy Brown about radio or TV? TV. I feel like it comes up a lot, though. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of things yeah. on radio because one of the things that worked on like news radio and uh, also in Frasier is that celebrities could be calling. Right. So when, when you used to watch Frasier, you're like, wait a minute, is that the guy from, you know, <laughs> you did a lot of that. Uh, Matt, Matt, what's up, buddy? Uh, you think uh, Coach would work? They're rebooting Coach. They're bringing oh, it back. They are. Yeah. Cast. Oh, really? Yeah, they're rebooting that. Uh, well, certainly, football is more popular and thought about today from a coaching and general manager point of view than it ever was back then. He was a college coach, right? He was a college coach, but then he went on to do the Orlando team. The Orlando Hurricanes or something <laughs> crazy like that. But he was the Minnesota Gophers coach or somebody. It was something like that. Um, but, I, yeah, I think that would still work because uh, people like it more. Uh, Matt, go ahead. Hey, Ron, this is Matt from Maine. Hey, I was thinking about Chips. Remember Chips that show growing up? The two sure. city, two shoe cops that went out and disco the whole time, never used their guns. That wouldn't hold up today because... People want to see violence. Cops using big guns and shooting people. Yeah, Chips was funny because it wasn't funny. It wasn't <laughs> action-y. It was that thing that if you had a couple good-looking guys, I guess... You get a couple seasons out of it? Yeah, you could get women to watch, but you had... But there was nothing to that show. They're doing a remake, I think, a movie right now. Count me in. I think it's going to be like one of those high action, like gritty remakes of Chips. Yeah, it's like when they did the Miami Vice yeah, right. I, I saw and they that in a mo- fucking plane. I saw it in theaters, Miami Vice movie. <laughs> really? I was excited <laughs> about it. I'm shocked. Have you ever gone back and watched Miami Vice? I uh, know. I once did, was enough in the movie. Dude, you got to go back and watch the TV show. Oh, yeah. Because that fucking show has zero plot to it whatsoever. Um, I was watching it the other night. I forget who runs it. Oh, El Rey Network. And um, they had the guy on from Genesis. And they it basically acted like a game show was live. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like one of the cops went on this game show. So he had to call off work that day. And then everyone at work saw him on the watching. game show. They were mad at him. Hey, what's he doing on there? And there's nothing more hilarious then the the captain on that get in here right now. <laughs> That's a Spanish guy with the. F- <laughs> I'm not even gonna look at any of you guys. As sick a son of the thing that you do. Get back to work right now. He doesn't look at the other characters. <laughs> he's looking like he's a ghost character, and then he, his lips don't move. I'm tired of all your hot shit stuff. Just get out on the streets and get you know, can. <laughs> You're like, excuse me, Captain. He's- and th- this guy used to get Emmy nominations. <laughs> I love Everybody that guy. thought that he was amazing. <laughs> Why are you wearing a pink jacket to a steakhouse? 
You're supposed to try to fit in. <laughs> Where'd you get that fancy car and that alligator hat too? <laughs> Looks like the drugs are coming in from Nicaragua. <laughs> Go back and watch this. You will not believe the fucking plots. They're amazing. <laughs> It was They're always amazing. drugs, right? Always drugs. It was constantly just yeah. They're trying to bring color. <laughs> they're trying to bring drugs in my eye. They're probably out on a fancy yacht right now, so we're gonna have to get a fancy yacht. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way we can get them. I want you to make the buy tonight. Oh, and your snitch yeah. found dead in Miami. Beautiful part of Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Your snitch was found in a beautiful hotel, drowned, cord wrapped around their neck, burnt. Mm. Wow, they really want my snitch dead. Hey, don't interrupt me. I'm talking <laughs> slow. <laughs> <laughs> what was he? Edward James Almost? Is that it? Yeah, I believe that yeah, was Edward James Almost. Um, he was the shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not looking at you guys for a reason. Wow. He never made eye contact. With the people around him. You know, I'm trying to make a connection here, boss. I don't even Anxious. see you. <laughs> but I'm just supposed to tell me what I did wrong here. Lean in if you want to hear me. <laughs> Where's the coke coming in? Pat. Hello. Yeah. What is it, Pat? Oh, no, I, I didn't know if you guys thought that, uh, wondered if, if Welcome Back Cotter could work today. Uh, it would definitely work because stupidity in school never gets... Old. Yeah. yeah, it's always funny. Again, that was another show that did not last as long as people thought. Like oh, really? Three years, maybe four, without John Travolta. He became a star during that. Yeah. It's a I've, theme song. For some reason, I thought that was a much longer show. Everybody always thinks those things were. Brady Bunch, three years. Gilligan's Island, I think, two or three years. Wait, wait, wait. Brady Bunch was three years? Three years and maybe even brought back. And you used to see how awkward they get. They brought it back like four times, too. Yeah, but not those fake. You were doing a tap dancing yeah. show. No, they did like a, they did like a revisit like 10, 15 years later. Yeah. Or where, was it like sad? <laughs> Everybody's life got really shitty. Yeah, but what about when uh, Martha from MTV was married to one of them? Oh, the, the movies? Yeah. I love those the movies. The TV movies. <laughs> I forget oh. if she married Peter or somebody. Yeah. What about me? I was on right then. <laughs> me, Don Johnson, the black guy. Oops. And that fat white guy that everybody liked. <laughs> kind of a Puerto Rican girl was there. <laughs> she would always be fucking up. <laughs> it was mainly me and Don Johnson. 21 Jump Street? And then our guest stars, Ted Nugent, to be on it. <laughs> he didn't wear a shirt. <laughs> he wore tuxedo pants with no shirt. I don't know why. <laughs> we got a break here. We got a guest coming in, right? We have comedian Eddie Ift coming in. He's performing at the Photo City Improv in Rochester, New York, tomorrow, December 11th, and Saturday, December 12th. Go to eddieift.com for all additional dates. And on Twitter, it's at Eddie Ift. Is he coming to Miami? I love to see him down there at a beautiful hotel. He'll be in North Carolina next week. <laughs> at the Laughing Gas Comedy Club. That's Thursday through Saturday. That should be great. I love comedy. I love to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that about you, boss. Oh man, when I go, forget about it. <laughs> it seems so sad. I just flip the fuck out. <laughs> I'm sad because I think a lot of bad stuff happened in my past. <laughs> <laughs> you I think? Probably, I probably love some girl, and then something bad happened to her. That's terrible. So I dedicated myself to law and public speaking. I didn't know about the second part. Break back, Bennington. Welcome back to Bennington. Eddie Ift is in studio. Eddie's performing at the Photo City Improv in Rochester, New York, tomorrow, December 11th, and Saturday, December 12th. And Eddie's also performing at Laughing Gas Comedy Club next Thursday, December 17th, through Saturday, December 19th, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Go to eddieift.com for all additional dates and tickets. And Eddie's podcast, Talking Shit with Eddie Ift, is available on iTunes. And Eddie and I are like old Vietnam buddies <laughs> because we both worked at the notorious WNEW. And even more, I think the fact that you were a sports guy. Oh, I forgot that. Sports guy. <laughs> the worst promos in history. Maybe possibly the biggest yeah. train wreck in radio of all time. Well, the beauty of it is, is like they weren't wrong with the premise. It ended up sports in the morning worked. They just couldn't get it together then. Well, 
Well, it was a genius idea. I remember yeah. when uh, Jeremy Coleman uh, pitched it to me because I came in as a guest one day, uh-huh. and because uh, David Allen Greer didn't show up, and uh, Dag. and I knew I knew the host Scott Kaplan from college. We uh-huh. went to college together, and he calls me and he's like, "Hey, you know, we want to come in and do a show," and I did it. And then he said, "You want to come back tomorrow?" And I went, "Yeah." And then the end of the day they're like do you want to be the co-host yeah <laughs> and i was like yeah, is that how this business works <laughs> you want to know the truth it's how i got into this business exactly really? yeah well exactly the same way and the funny thing is i said no i didn't yeah. want the job because i'm a stand-up and i didn't want to get up early in the morning and uh i was like no i don't and then uh, they gave me money that i didn't know i could get and i was like yeah. okay i'll take this job but then my partner sid Found out how much money I was making <laughs> until he became my mortal enemy because I guess they paid me more than him. Well, no, here's the deal. No matter what Sid was paid, it was going to end up in someone else's hands anyway. <laughs> I was telling him this story earlier. Like, I get yeah. calls from the mob telling me, like, hey, you like your show? And I'm like, yeah, like, you want it to keep going? And yeah. I'm like, yeah, they're like, then you got to pay some money. I'm like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> right. Well, Sid, yeah, that's the thing. If you've got a gambling problem, in New York, it's not funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. you're dealing with the scariest people you've ever met. But how many? You know that sports guy show was done and redone so many times. Oh my god! Well, we yeah. uh, back to the Sid thing. I remember coming to work one day and he wasn't there, and one of the guys that worked with us knew the people that he uh, owed some money, and he goes, "Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's coming in today." <laughs> and we said, "Why not?" And he said. He might not ever be coming in again. And yeah. we, we went, are you, are you serious? And he goes, yeah, it's, it's not good. And, uh, I'm sitting there going, this, this shit really happens. This is like, this really, really happens. Yeah. And, uh, he was, but it was, it was a genius idea because it was, it was supposed to be like Love Line, but with sports yeah. where you have the expert and then you have the comedian and the expert makes all the, 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 the sports talk and then the comedian just be uh, just as funny but uh sid would vacillate all the time he would go for he would get mad because he'd say you know didn't you watch the jets game and i'm like no <laughs> I, I, I yeah. didn't and he'd be like why not i'm like because i have a life <laughs> you know like i don't sit in my room yeah. and study statistics so we 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 just battled and battled and battled. there were fight i remember i got in a fight with jay glazer one time and <laughs> and this sid's like he's a black belt he's gonna kill you eddie <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got thrown off the show, and Jeremy told me afterwards, he goes, if you ever fight like that again, you do it on the air. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember your show, the only other time, the only time I've done your show, we had the Christmas party, and we were all at the Christmas party, and then someone like Opie or somebody said, hey, we're all going back to Ron and Fez's show. Yeah. <laughs> They're on the air right now. And so you weren't at the Christmas party. So I walk into your show and you have like this transgender, <laughs> like behemoth of a human being standing in a baby pool. Yeah. And you had given him an enema. A nurse gave him an enema. Yeah. And uh, I, I shouldn't say him, her, uh, that gave her an enema. And we were all telling jokes to her and every whoever could make her pass the the water was considered the funniest person in the world. Yeah, it was something I think it was like a European thing. And I believe the transgender person he's talking about was Paul O. But I I know um uh you know when you have an S and M person uh who's who goes around hitting people professionally. A What's, dominatrix? Yeah, the dominatrix. Opie made a dominatrix cry by saying she looked like <laughs> Joey Ramone. And the fucking dominatrix is used to be and you know, everyone yeah. listens and we're like, hey, we're not fucking working for you. Fuck you. You know what I mean? I'm and in she, charge. Yeah. I no, remember, we don't play that. Brian Regan was your guest that night. Yeah. And Brian, one of the funniest men in the world, is telling jokes to this <laughs> transgender and nothing's happening. No 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 laughs. And and and, and you know, but I remember the transgender just sitting there going nah, nah, like trying, trying to, to hold it hold in. It in yeah. and all all of a sudden, it was Opie or Anthony. One I think of, Opie nailed it. One of them goes, one puts the lotion in the basket <laughs> yeah. or one gets the hose again. Yeah. And they just went, Aah! I mean, splattering it was, everywhere. It was, well, you know, it was genius radio. What are you going to do about <laughs> it? it was, uh, but that fucking radio station was so tilted on its side. And you're like, you know what the thing is? If a train is coming off the tracks and you're tilted and you're just going faster, 
everyone is screaming like it's fun. Yeah. But we know it's going to hit something, too. Yeah. You know? Sure. But it was, I mean, we could easily do a documentary. I was just thinking the same thing because, I mean, Opie and Anthony took it to a whole nother level. But I was just saying Radio Chick, which was the show yeah. on After Me. So it went Sports Guys, Radio Chick, uh, Opie and Anthony, then I think you guys. Or there might yeah. have been a show in between. Well, sometimes Don and Mike was in oh, yeah. different, different slots. Sometimes they were middays. Sometimes we moved that around a lot in like the year and a half or two years. But I walked out. I walked out of the office one day and into the studio. And there's in the green room outside the studio. There's a stripper in a uh, in a baby pool. And there's an old lady in a wheelchair and she's got a hot dog on a stick and she's holding it under the stripper's vagina and the stripper's blowing fire out of her vagina roasting the hot dog <laughs> and i walk in and i go oh this is interesting and somebody goes that's her grandmother oh, <laughs> oh, God. and yeah. i just went this is this is incredible this is, i knew at that moment i'm like i'm living during a period of radio history that yeah. hasn't been chronicled and I, I mean i remember walking in one day and them going uh every Everyone's in jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the uh, the the voyeur bus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, Jimmy went to jail. Louis Black. Louis, Louis Black, Black yeah. was in jail. A couple more people, but before that, it was amazing radio re- leading right up to the jail time. Like I was listening at my house, and I'm like. This and because they said, "Do you want to go on the voyeur bus with them?" and I'm like, "Fuck no, <laughs> <laughs> you're not." This is Giuliani's New York. Now that was they were riding through like Times Square, and it was glass and glass, and naked women were dancing <laughs> in the fucking thing. Yeah, and the you know, first of all, you had listeners going crazy, but then you also just had. Fucking tourists who were like, where are we? What the hell is going and on? And listeners following them in a convoy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the <laughs> listeners were insane in those days. They yeah, were they, insane. They, they, Opie and Anthony inspired some. And you did, too. Your show, even our show had the weirdos that, I mean, I used to, they hated me. because When they hired me, they said, uh, you're going to do sports. And I said, uh, they said, do you know sports? I go, yeah, I can talk about the Steelers, the Penguins, and the Pirates. You know, that I'm from right. Pittsburgh. <laughs> and they went, well, that's not going to work. And I went, well, and they go, just do the job. So I had listeners that wanted to fight me every day. Who were, And so finally it got to the point I'd be like, all right, come down here to fight me. <laughs> like, I'll fight you. Come down. Right. We're just going to do it on the end. And then I just wouldn't come out. I'd make them stand outside. And they'd be like, is he coming down? And I'd be like, no, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You just came all the way here and i drop water balloons on them or whatever i could do <laughs> there were because not only your co-host but then later there was another guy who did the morning with the sports guys who had a gambling problem <laughs> and you would go down there and you know there would be those guys with like waiting in the lobby downstairs and you get up and the morning guy would still be just like hanging around needing a shave <laughs> they still down there yeah they're still down there <laughs> <laughs> But can I tell you, we basically, you know, I had come from doing shock jock fucking radio in Florida. And then what Opie and Anthony were doing was just like ridiculous to me. Yeah. I'm they, just like, this is in fuck, this is physically insane. They really <laughs> took it to another level. Yeah. That, uh, and, and people, I was just on a show and they were talking about how that doesn't exist anymore. No. And I go, it does in some sense of the word in podcasting a little bit. Um, but it's just not. Not to that mass appeal. Like, yeah, the thing is, in podcasting, you're going to get niche. your fans. Yeah. But in that, somebody could be driving down the road, right. <laughs> turn on their radio, and go, what the fuck is this? It's eight blocks from my house. Yeah. The, this fucking Caliglia bullshit <laughs> is going down. And you can have fans of a podcast, but with, with live radio, it's an audience. Like, they're, in a way, there, even though they're not physically present. So I think in that way, it it makes it more connected. But Owen and I were also doing stuff like, uh, and again, it was very fucking ancient Roman Empire, but they were like, <laughs> uh, we'll give out this prize to the person with the best scar. So you'd just be there and people would be coming in with these horrendous <laughs> fucking scars. Yeah. <laughs> And then, you know, they bring them, oh, oh my God, you know, they're just disgusted. I always used to be terrified when we did like listener appreciation thing and the listeners yeah. would show up. It was like, you found the worst human beings in the world sure. and made them the fans of our yeah. show. Not only that is that they would, you know, that was the exact time that the fucking internet was coming together and you would have these 
fan sites, right? And I always remember, like, we did a bar crawl, we did a bar thing, and then, like, a month goes by, and, they, and we're like, oh, yeah, there's this Run and Fez party, and I'm like, no, there's not. <laughs> they fucking organized it without us. Oh, and just put it on, I guess, I guess we gotta go. But now these people talk to each other instead of through us. Yeah. You know? And I know people that still hang out years ago. From the people <laughs> married, they had kids, they divorced. It was a really, really crazy time. But wouldn't that make a great documentary? You could Amazing. have everybody Absolutely. to Amazing. And I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that got shot. And then you go back and I just found found some video footage of us. We would take uh the chairs with the wheeled chairs and run them down the hallway down that ramp. As, with the interns, with me, with uh, as fast as we could, and slam into the door. And we had superstar. You remember Eddie? Oh yeah, yeah. he was still like calls a, every once in a while. Does he really? He lives out of Florida. Oh, he's I, retired. He's great. I love superstar. He was yeah. a great guy. And then uh, uh, th- there were so many characters there. It was just it was like, amazing. It just attracted like mongoloids. Yeah, it really did. Uh, and you had people. You know, Jeremy had had a lot of success. With, you know, Howard in the morning and he had Donna Mike and, and then G Gordon Lady in DC. But when he, when he came up, this format had already started. So the madness factor, you mean O and A were <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> they were crazy. And basically you looked at two guys that kind of grown up on Howard. So they were going to say, what's the next level? level? Yeah. <laughs> and that level was eventually having sex in a cathedral. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it didn't take long, by the way. You know what I mean? It was, um, completely insane and still in a weird way, the best radio you can ever do because when you're local, you can say, Hey, does everybody know that pothole on, you know, and everybody would be like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like you, your audience knew where you went. You knew what they did. You just talked about the mayor. When you do, uh, you know, a podcast where you're yeah. talking to the world, yeah. you're never going to have the same intensity. No. It was a different time. That yeah. fucking asshole at the liquor store fucks with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we ought to do something to him. And that they would then yeah. do something to yeah. him. Yeah. And that is like the best radio when everybody knows exactly what you're talking about all the time. And you're not talking in theory. When you say it's raining right now, everyone knows it's raining. You know what I mean? Or when you have, when your local team loses, everyone is crushed together. When you watch ESPN, those guys don't fucking care who wins or loses. But when you listen to a local sports radio show, the fucking Eagles fans are destroyed <laughs> yeah. that they dropped another game and their callers are destroyed and they literally like, uh, they want to die. And that's, that's the intensity that you get out of local terrestrial, which they've sucked yeah. the air out of. Yeah. There's nobody having fun out there. Anymore. <laughs> no. And it, it's funny. They, uh, I just did a radio show, a podcast radio show. It was a radio show that went to podcast in Florida. It's really popular. Uh, Dan and Tom show in, in Orlando. And, uh, they were talking about Tom, I guess, was the intern of this other radio show, and they just tortured him and made him do all these right. hor- horrific things. And then I knew a guy, there was a show in South Beach or whatever that I used to do to promote my shows when I was down there, that they tortured their intern really bad. Like, they'd throw darts at his back, put right. a dartboard on the back. They kidnapped him once and blindfolded him and then took the blindfold off, and he was in, in the zoo in the cage with the Komodo dragon. Mm-hmm. Like, just horrible. And he said... I think somebody should do a documentary about the sidekicks that have been tortured. Yeah. Like the, the, the guy that's willing to sacrifice his life for fame and how badly they've all been. Cause if you look at every show, there is that guy, that intern. Yeah. Or, and by yeah. the way, you got, you're not doing this to fucking break into Wall Street. <laughs> you're doing it to break into the <laughs> shittiest fucking business <laughs> ever. <laughs> And I always wonder, like, why would you want to get into something if you don't have, like, a, if you're not the funny guy, right? <laughs> then, when, then why are you doing this? Like, I, I guess it's funny if they do shit. To me, I don't know. I don't want to leave. You know. I hope my sidekick from my podcast is not listening right now. Yeah, because I need him dearly. We've we've done some horrible things to him. <laughs> horrible. Eddie F. Said Studio is performing at the Photo City Improv in Rochester, New York, tomorrow, December 11th, and Saturday, December 12th. He's also performing at Laughing Gas Comedy Club, Thursday, December 17th, through Saturday, December 19th, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And Eddie's podcast, Talking Shit with Eddie Ift, is available on iTunes. It's on Twitter. It's at Eddie Ift. We were talking about when we all were at WNEW this short 
flame out of a radio station. And by the way, this never gets brought up. Everyone hated the radio station, too, because it used to be the great rock heritage station <laughs> yeah. that just let a bunch of assholes run on. And I remember ONA would do stuff like they would just, like, destroy Springsteen records where they were sitting <laughs> in there, you know, in fucking the tri-state area where Bruce is a god. They would just be breaking his CDs, you know, and they would just have people furious, just <laughs> furious <laughs> and a lot of times i would come in to do my show and my phones were just and it would always be are when i fired are when, <laughs> they got fucking in there, there was a, at least 19 or 20 things that they did that seemed like it was fireable before the thing that they got fired, fired for yeah. yeah you know it wasn't that far. i couldn't believe i would listen to them and they would bitch about jeremy or someone or, yeah and i'm like how can they how are they allowed to do that shit and then Sid would drop the N word on our show, and I'd right. go, "Did you just, did you just <laughs> say that on the air?" And, yeah. and I'd be like, "Oh, we're gonna get shut down. We're yeah. gonna get." And he'd be like, "What? Like, what did, what did I do?" And I'm like, "You just, you just d- didn't, he, didn't you didn't? He, there was no shit. There was no like off. He just yeah. said it." And uh, <laughs> it's just so, but, but you know, you're also not saying that in, you know, Nebraska. You're staying when you're close to the Bronx and Brooklyn and East yeah. New York. Like anything could have happened at any time. There would always be like weird listeners hanging at the bottom when you would get, get out anyway. Um, just strangeness going all the way around. What's Scott Kaplan doing now? Kaplan's doing radio in San Diego. Is that right? I've done his, he does a sports radio show. I've done his show and he's big into horse racing. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's always the and Sid's in South Florida, right? Sid, I have not seen in a long time. Uh, Sid and I had kind of had a falling out at the end. Sure. And uh, I saw him once at a basketball game, and he was sitting courtside, and I was like up in the and I I had his number, and I used another phone and started like prank texting, <laughs> and uh, and I was like, I see, I see your fat bald head down there on courtside. I, I, I'm going to spit on the back here, you know. And he kept going, "Who is this? Who is this?" And I kept seeing him. It was funny because he kept turning around and like trying to see who was texting him. Yeah. And I'm across the court, and I'm going to. I think it was my brother. I'm like, watch, watch, watch what I do now, <laughs> you know. And I type something, but um, no, it's. Uh, um, it's a, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy. It, it was, and the funny thing is, I'm talking about this. You'd think I was on the show for 20 years. I was only there for six months. Yeah, <laughs> and all this shit happened, and it it has this like indelible mark in my head that I'm like, well, uh, that's why I called it Vietnam because you would have these experiences that would last a lifetime. And then there would always be like a new guy coming in and they look just like fresh meat to you. You're like, they're like, dude, are you, and you're just like, oh, fuck, you know what this, huh? I don't know. We're just riding it out. (laughs) We're just fucking riding it out. That was kind of how everybody, I would go, are we allowed to, and everyone would go, I I don't, we don't know. We don't, uh, and Matty Stout, I still know who was the producer and he's out in San Francisco and I've, I used to do his radio show all the time, the Alice show out in San Francisco, but, uh. There is, it, it, it like had this like it's like we went through Vietnam together. Well, like was Olive a producer when you were there? Olive was our producer, and now he's, he's a giant, <laughs> big thing in uh, CBS Radio. I mean, it's about as high up as you can go. And part of his job was waking up morning guys, or they would throw their fucking clothes out the window because they weren't paying their hotel bill. You know what I mean? So they would chuck their suitcases out the window and come down <laughs> the fucking God. fire escape. It, and now that guy's running, you know. It was a really awkward time for me. To, my uh, growing up, one of my really close friends is uh, Howard's wife, Beth. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's strange. It was the strangest thing in yeah. the world because Beth and I were running around New York City like we went to college together, went to high school to get grade school. I've known her my whole life, and then she just started dating Howard at the time where I, like she had been dating him for a little bit. I get hired to go on at the same time as Howard. Right. So I've just met Howard. And now I'm this. This prick that's competing with his yeah. time slot, and he was not a fan of the station. And then O and A started battling him, and then it became like I was the middleman behind it all. So O and A were like, "What are you doing?" And I'm, I don't, I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm new here. Right. I'm just trying to get a check. I, yeah. I, I just want to get to my show. And when I got in the fight on the show, like literally, we almost, like we, I think we start pushing and fighting and went out into the green room. They threw me out off the show. They go, "Get out of here! You're, you're, you're suspended." So I left, and. uh 
I got on a plane and flew to Florida. I was like, I had a show that night in Florida. So I just went to Florida and I was expecting to get fired. And that's when Jeremy's like, no, no, you've got to fight. Keep it in the room. Keep it in the room. He's like, that's the first time you've done good radio. (laughs) And then, uh, and you know what Jeremy's doing now? uh, He's with Stern. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah, it's very funny. And he was always having to pull over there. That's why I always try to tell people here that this business is so small yeah. that you got to be careful of your permanent en- enemies. Yeah. You know, just because you know a guy and you're like, boy, that guy doesn't seem like he's got it together. Just let on that he does. <laughs> 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 because then the weird thing is Tim was with Howard then and ended up over here. You know, with O and A, the whole thing was just crazy how it goes around <laughs> in circles like that. Uh, but every, it, it's almost sad that that kind of radio is left behind. Oh, and there's I, no young guys I, doing it. I loved it. I loved listening to it. Uh, we try, I, I guess I try, I was doing my podcast for a while with a comedian named Jim Jeffries. Mm-hmm. And for a while, because Jim had had a lot of experience on O and A, and that was just, how I was brought up, you know, I was a Howard fan and then ONA and all that kind of shit going on that we tried to institute that in our podcast. And it was weird because it was a podcast and we didn't think anyone was listening to us. We were like, no one's going to listen to this shit. It's a mm-hmm. podcast. And it blew up really quickly. And we had that insanity. We, we got kicked off iTunes three times. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you get kicked off the internet? <laughs> I've watched a video of a horse fuck a guy to death, to death. And it's still on there. And I'm like, why? And they would kick us off and we'd have to call and apologize and they'd put us back on. But we kept doing stuff like, and I'd get calls from my manager and like, you're going to get sued. You're getting sued. And it's not like radio. You don't have a station to <laughs> yeah, back you up. Yeah. Really and that true. was the big issue was they kept going, you guys are going to have the police over. I mean, we did have the police at our house. We had, uh, you know, there were just all kinds of crazy stuff where I, I and even to this day, I keep thinking if there's ever a lawsuit, I've got 400 episodes of evidence. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I can't destroy it now. It's, it's, right. it's out there. And I'm like, there's stuff that we've said that, you know, is the statue of limitations over? <laughs> like we, and I, I've, got, I've had guys on my podcast tell stories where they murdered people. I've had, uh, you know, like real true, like yeah. this guy in Australia tells story about he stabbed a guy 47 times to death. And, uh, you know, and we're like, Oh God, like another guy told us that he didn't, he didn't admit it, but he kind of said, uh, you know, if I did kill the guy, you know, we were like, where would the guy, where would you have hid the body? <laughs> and he's like, go fishing. <laughs> and I'm like, so you off air. I'm like, so you killed the guy. <laughs> Good radio. Good radio. But that part where you said where the body was. Excellent. That's where your soul goes when you're doing that kind of shit. This is what happens to news people. They're like, all right. Jump, 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 jump. There he goes. The tragedy took place and we've got it. I was talking to Big Jay Okerson last yeah. night about it because he does a show, podcast that's kind of that old style, like shock yeah. jock stuff. And we do it too. And we were almost having like a, what's the worst thing you've done off? You know, and, and he's like, oh, we had all these heroin addicts. And I'm like, oh, we had meth addicts. You know, we brought them on our show. And he's like, oh, we, we only had them call in. I'm like, no, we, I let, I let them in my house. <laughs> Eddie F's podcast, Talking Shit with Eddie F, is available on iTunes. And he's performing at the Photo City Improv in Rochester, New York, tomorrow, December 11th, and Saturday, December 12th. Go to eddieif.com for all additional dates and for tickets. Thank you for that, Chris. That was very nice and professional. Oh, yeah. thank you. You did a great job. Yeah. Now, Chris was a kid. He was a listener. Yeah. Of oh, you guys? Then. Yeah, of yeah. the whole station. Yeah. And- it sounded like the fucking best thing ever. <laughs> I mean, that's why you wanted to go into radio. Yes, because of because of, the, of fucking Ron and Fez and Opie and Anthony. I mean, and WAW. I would come home every day and listen to it. I'd leave. I'd skip the last. But I would. I wouldn't go to my last class. So I get home. Be home by three, so I can listen to the radio from three to fucking whenever. You know, I, I always kind of wonder. Like they do this in this big corporate, this giant building. We, we I don't know. This wasn't the. We, we were the building on. What were we on? Fifty seventh, right? Yeah. And I always wonder why. It, it, you remember that that uh, movie, The Boat That Rocks? Yeah. Where they were out at sea. It, it should have been something like that, where they put us all out on a boat somewhere, or in a house in the middle of some place where where. 
it, it was like this place to go to. That's what I always kind of wanted, where there was no corporation involved. And it was as – and I thought podcasting was going to get to that, but it somehow didn't. Well, what always happens is all the shows hate each other. Yeah. Like you would think, oh, we're all in this together. No. But I think Ron and Fez were the only people who got along, you got along with, with everybody yeah. because we had done shock radio before. So – we were like, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen here, but nothing's <laughs> real. You know what I mean? And everybody else thought everything was real. You'd already we, been through it. Yeah, we were like, well, yeah, we'd already been through that stuff where it all comes down and gets built back up again. And, you know, we didn't take it as serious. But all the shows would have these wars going back and on. And some of it was just because somebody was getting more attention than they were or whatever. Everybody wanted to be the lead guitar player. But even the sales department, I remember one of those nights, they would come in drunk and <laughs> the fucking head of sales was on the air for an hour and a half. And he was this real New York and he, and he was talking nuts for an hour. And we're all in tears and he literally came out of his blackout on the air and he yelled out, oh, shit, I'm on the radio and ran out. <laughs> what was his name? Uh, I can't think of it right now. If Fezzi was here, he'd, he'd know his name. Because I think that's the guy who we had a doctor who advertised on our show for LASIK surgery. Yeah. And I have bad eyesight. And he was like, you want LASIK? And I was like, it was early in the days of LASIK. Yeah. And I was like, um, I, I'd be interested in looking into it, you know, and he's like. I'll pick you up tomorrow after work. I'm yeah. going to drive you to New Jersey. You're getting LASIK. He drove me the day, like, the next day. He's like, let's go. Let's go get in the car and drove me to New Jersey just so he could keep this client. And he's like, you're going to get LASIK surgery. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know if I want a laser beam going into my eye right now. Yeah. And he's like, no, it's going to be good for the show. You're getting LASIK. You're, you're getting. Uh -huh. So I'm sitting in the waiting room about to go in and get LASIK surgery with no thought. <laughs> uh -huh. No thought at all. And I get on the phone to my parents. I have an ophthalmologist and I call him i go uh you know i'm about to go in and get lasik surgery he's like who is this guy blah, blah, blah. he goes get out of there just get out of there right now like, you, you don't you don't take free lasik surgery and i'm like but he says the guy's pretty good he's like pretty good is what you want of your barber <laughs> not the guy that's cutting your eyeball get out so he got so pissed off. He wouldn't speak to me the whole way home. And I'm like, you just picked me up and drove me to get eye surgery. Yeah, because you probably cost him 1500 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was going right into his pocket. Did you do the Stacker 2 ads? Oh, we did all of the fucking... Uh, there would be... With Stacker 2, I can eat all the cannolis I want without ever having to worry about it. <laughs> I still remember that ad over and over. <laughs> Stacker 2. <laughs> my like my once I got like comfortable on the radio, I start doing all the ads. And one day I'm reading a stack or two ad, and I'm and I just thought we could do anything we wanted. I'm like stack or two, it's just like cocaine. <laughs> and all of a sudden I see the ad guy in the window banging on the door. <laughs> what are you doing? And I'm going stack or two, it's just like cocaine. Same exact feeling. And you just feel like you're on. Co and he's like, you just lost us a client. You just lo they're telling me that you're saying it's just like cocaine, but it's legal. And uh, I had to apologize. I had to call stack or two and say like i'll never do it again well everything that we did there was either legal speed <laughs> or beer and they would all send you know what i mean like everybody's office was just piled of these fucking <laughs> Fuck. java juices and, legal, <laughs> and just the cases and cases of beer i think oh and i had a a, a, a keg that was set up it's ridiculous in their place it was crazy i remember uh one time, I, I, every day I thought I was getting fired. And I was like, this would be kind of cool. I've got a contract. I'll get paid out. And I, I didn't want to be there. Cause I, I was doing stand up and auditioning and all at the same time. So I, you know, you're on it. I had to be there at like four in the morning on the air at six off at 10. We'd stick around till noon. Then I'd go on auditions. Then I'd do shows in SD down at the cellar. At the time I just started stand up. I was doing like, to, you know, 145 spots right. at the cellar. So I even told her, I'm like, Esty, I'm dying. You know, I'm dying. I need to go on earlier. And she was like, no, too bad. So I was taking shifts. I was like, I'd try to sleep for two hours in between and then two hours after. And 
some nights I'd go out and party afterwards. <laughs> and one night, I forget what can be, it was like a tell and someone else. We went out and we just started drinking. And I was like, every drink I had, I kept going. The big joke was like, to getting fired. Like, I was like, <laughs> I'm getting fired for sure. And I was getting like blackout drunk. And I remember like a bunch of girls dropping me off at like 559 at 57th Street at the office. And I just roll out of the car and they're all screaming, you're getting fired. <laughs> and I just go upstairs and I do the show and I'm shit faced. And um, and I do the show. And after the show's over, I mean, I want to pass out. I'm so, so fucked up. And I remember it was like Maddie or Oliver. One of them looks at me and goes, that's the best show you've ever done that's when i go and I, and I didn't tell them during the show but i go i'm fucking shit-faced and they go do it every day <laughs> get fucked up every night and then maddie would take me out we would we'd get so drunk and he'd be like see you in two hours <laughs> all right Good to see you again. Great dude. to see you. It's, it's, it's and good we got to do that documentary. We really should. <laughs> I we, know. I'm sure everybody would be glad to do it. It would we, you be know, awesome. We just need one person in charge. Um, all right, Chris, plug time. Eddie Ifty's performing at Photo City Improv in Rochester, New York, tomorrow, December 11th, and Saturday, December 12th. And he's also performing at Laughing Gas Comedy Club Thursday, December 17th, through Saturday, December 19th, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Go to eddieift.com for all additional dates and tickets. And Eddie's podcast, Talking Shit with Eddie Ift, is available on iTunes and on Twitter, at Eddie Ift. All right, that's it for us. See you all again in 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! Yeah.